Mm. Hello, family. Let me get my remote. Just in case. I got on clothes, y'all. Just my shorts are just short. And I made uh, bread the other day. So that's what I'm snacking on if you see me snacking. But I'm going to give people a chance to come in. As you come in, let me know where you are watching from. And let me know whether or not you are relaxed or natural. As you come in, let me know where you are watching from. And let me know if you are relaxed or natural. And give me a thumbs up. Everybody, please. There's 30 people in here right now. Please, everybody, give me a thumbs up. Because the more of you give me a thumbs up, the more people that click it. Come on, click it. You right there. Just click it. It's 36 of y'all in here. I should have 36 clicks. Click it. Look, click it. Look, click it. Hello. Hello. Everybody in California, I love you and I'm praying for you. I am. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. So, I have a video um coming, but it's probably going to be here tomorrow. So, I want to talk about single strand knots. Hey, you're not natural. Okay. So I want to talk about single strand knots. It has been, what, not even 48 hours since our last live. I think I either went live yesterday or the day before yesterday. But I am aware, like I've been telling you guys, that I lose 100 strands of hair a day. So to prevent over 100 strands. So to prevent single strand knots, I always untwist my hair and comb through it with a little bit of oil and then i retwist it back up again i know that may seem like busy work for a lot of people but this is how you prevent single strand knots plus i have some super exciting news let me move this um light but i have some super duper exciting news oh my god and low-key like i want to be on here talking to y'all so I'm not checking my phone every five minutes. So you guys tell me what y'all want to talk about. Tell me what you want to talk about right now. I'm just about to adjust this light because I'm in my room. My children are. My children are in school and my son has taken over my office. So we're in here. Yeah. Your issue is shedding. What What is your um, normal hair routine? And keep in mind, like I just told you, shedding is normal. You're supposed to lose anywhere from 100 to 200 strands of hair a day. So shedding is normal. It is 100% normal. It is nothing to be alarmed about. Now, if your hair is falling out in patches, if you're noticing that your hair is thinning out from it shedding, then that's a whole nother story. Um, while you guys are in here, I do have a surprise for y'all. Like a big surprise. I was getting them a few weeks ago. I have to brush my hair and keep moisturizing my hair. But the thing, okay, this is what I want y'all to remember. Don't pack your hair full of oil. So you see what I'm doing right now? This is olive oil, right? Okay, and the particles in olive oil are pretty small and they are not going to clog my follicle if I get any oil on my hair, on my scalp. But I'm not putting oil on my scalp because your scalp produces its own oil called sebum. So I don't need to put oil on my scalp. This is to retain length on my ends. And if you watch my last live, this is the first time that I've touched my hair since then. And so as you can see, it didn't, oh Lord, as you can see, it didn't leave like no cakiness or anything on it. Remember, as you're combing out your hair, most people, when you, most people comb their hair like this. Hold on y'all, my kids broke my little thing. Most people would just go like this, like, just take a comb. No, you want to take your hair in your hand. So take this part of your hand and put it right here. And then grab your hair like this. 
and then begin combing on the ends but make sure that you're using a little bit of tension right there so you can let the follicle know hey girl i ain't trying to take no hair out of there girl i'm just trying to get the people who trying to go and this is why people end up having single strand knots because we think that we can go two three weeks without combing our hair and that's just not the way that the cookie crumbles Okay, so I am doing a little bit something different because I have this video that I'm about to, that I am going to record for you guys. So this side, as you guys know, I have Hydronitis Superativa. So sometimes I have outbreaks in my scalp and this used to be a big ball spot. And it, this is how it looks now. And this is going through with this went through. So I'll show you that. Give me a four if you want me to like show you that and explain it to you on the other side. Give me a four if you want to see it. Okay. Okay. And so sometimes you think that you got it all, but I'm going... So it's impossible for me to get knots in my hair if I'm making sure that all of the hair that wants to drop off is able to drop off. So I'm gonna just, I'm actually going to braid this because the video that I am about to do is going to cause for that. So this is gonna be super important. Y'all make sure that y'all always, I'm gonna get to the comment as soon as I finish this braid, I promise. Um, make sure that y'all always catch on my lives because this is how I'm going to start doing it. Like I'll do the beginning part, like the braid down, mostly because when you look at the analytics, most of y'all don't really be messing with the braid down part. Cause y'all already know that. So we can come on here and go live and we can just kick it while I do this part of the video. And then the next one will just start with whatever pattern we did. Give me a three if you think that's a good idea. And now I'm making sure that I get my ends because I felt as I, mind you, I have high porosity hair. That's all the oil that I'm using. I have high porosity hair. So I can feel a little, there's a little, oh, you can't, hold on. I can feel a little bitty knot right there. So, or what would end up eventually turning into a knot. So I'm just going to lubricate my ends. And it's gonna slide right off. But you just gotta take your time. And then boom. This would have been a knot. I don't know if you can see it. Uh, that would have been a knot. It was getting ready to knot. I could literally feel it on my ends. It was getting ready to be a knot. That would have been a single strand knot. Single strand knots are not knots in your hair. Single strand knots is when you don't comb your hair out on a regular basis and the hair one of the hundreds of hairs that were supposed to fall out every day did not get a chance to fall down so they grouped together at the ends and i'm proving it to you right now i am proving it to you right now so this is gonna i'm actually gonna do a braid i mean a, it's gonna be like a part going across here i'm probably gonna dip up a little bit like right here, because I'm doing a U part. And it's a lace U part. So give me a two if you think that's gonna be a good uh pattern. Actually, I think I'm gonna have to just go ahead and undo everything because it's gonna be too much to. Okay, so notice how I'm not putting grease on my scalp. Look at my scalp. My scalp is not dry at all, and I haven't put any oil on my scalp. That is because our scalps produce an oil called sebum. You, your scalp produces its own oil. So you have to make sure that the follicle stays clean and clear, so that way your hair has a healthy environment. Okay, so I got most of the tangles out with this, even though there are no tangles. See, look, there are a couple hairs right there. 
It's not dirty. It's not dirty. It's just got a stain on it. Those are all pieces of hair. And I went ahead and caught them before they turned into nuts on my ends. So I'm lubricating my ends. And I already have a pretty good amount of shea bay on there, so I'm good. See, look. Look at that. That would have been a knot. And so with that, that would have been a knot. Okay, so when you say dandruff, do you mean that you have, do you mean that you have big flakes, like big flakes that look like scabs that you have to comb out of your hair? Or are you talking about like little flakes on your shoulders? Which one are you talking about when you say dandruff? <laughs> Okay, so if you have big flakes, when you, like big flakes like scabs, then you need to first change your diet because please understand that any problem that you are having with your scalp, that is your skin. Just like if your skin was to start breaking out and you go to a dermatologist, the first thing they're going to ask you is what is your diet? How much water do you consume in a day? So those are all things that you really, really need to take into account because outward things that happen on the body are always signs of internal things that are going on. So I cannot... um I can't give you consultation like that without knowing your porosity, your density, any type of medical issues that you can have because that form of dandruff could have so many different reasons. So if I tell you something to do right now and it's the wrong cause, I could do more harm than good. I'm going to go on this side because I got to actually I have to take down all these because I'm going to do like a little, this part is fine because I'm going to just do a zoop, zoop, and then a zoop. Yeah, you guys, if you have a lot of, okay, so it's two things. If you have big, huge flakes, like like the size of like scabs constantly on your scalp, that's something that you kind of need to go, you may need to see a dermatologist for. But then even before that, you want to start looking into your diet, looking at the type of stuff that you're eating, the type of medications you're taking. Like I said, with big flakes and stuff like that, that is something that <laughs> with my certifications and with my licenses, I would... It's unethical of me to give you advice right now because I can't see you. I don't know what your patterns are, so I can't um, answer that question. But if it's just dandruff, like the flakes that are on your shoulders, then in that case, your pores are clogged. Your pores are clogged and that is your scalp's way of trying to breathe. You either have an extremely dry scalp because the follicle is blocked and it can't breathe or you have some type of deficiency as it pertains to what you're putting on your scalp. Because a lot of times you don't even realize that the products that you're using on your hair are is actually the issue. So that's why if you guys are going to ask me a question, I need you to tell me what your patterns are. I need to know your porosity and your density. And I need to know how your hair is on a day-to-day -day basis. I can't give you... I, it's hair... It's not a one size fits all. That's like y'all going into the doctor's office and be like, my stomach hurt. What's wrong? Like, girl, it could be so many reasons why your stomach hurt, girl. You can have gas, girl. Girl, could be that taco you ate, girl. Could have been the sour cream could be bad. Yeah, I don't know. Where can you find a girl on Amazon? Your scalp is super dry. So, yeah. And then it could be, what is your level of porosity, love? Oh, just to let you know, really quick while you're telling me um, 
what your porosity is. You know, notice the icon next to her name. That's because she's one of my members. I love you. And so to show appreciation to all of my channel members, I am having a business webinar that all of the people that are in CEO Masters are paying for. But because you are supporting this channel so much, I am giving all of my CEO Masters the link to my webinar tomorrow. So if you are already signed up on CEO Masters, you Oh, CEO Masters, if you're already signed up to be a member here on my channel, then make sure that you check the community page because once you sign up to be a member here on my channel, then you automatically have access to exclusive content and I'm going to be adding the link to my live webinar that is going on tomorrow that all of my members will get into for free. And this is what I'm giving you guys for supporting me because I appreciate it so much. Like, I know that it's hard out here for a pimp, you know, trying to get the money for the rent with the Cadillacs and gas money spent and all these companies jumping ship. I understand. So I appreciate the fact that all of y'all supported me like that. I really do. And so I'm giving back to you. And in my webinar tomorrow, I am giving y'all the inside scoop, okay? And that webinar tomorrow, I am letting y'all know all of my secrets for building a business. And CEO Masters is so dope because I am teaching my students how to build a business from the ground up. I know I'm looking crazy real quick, but just real, real quick, everything that I did and all of the mistakes that I made, I took all of those mistakes out. And in CEO Masters, I'm giving you the full blueprint. And peep this, it's only $6.99 a month, less than you pay at the McDonald's, okay? Like a high, a, a, a dollar two more than a high and ready, like a less than a dollar more of a high and ready. And it's crazy because I'm, I don't know, I'm just so excited because so many of my students are getting results and it just makes me so happy. And so that's why I'm like, okay, let me tell my YouTube family about it. So, you know... Give me a two if you interested, and then I'll have one of the moderators leave the um, info. Where can you find Shea Bay Butter? Well, I make my own Shea Bay Butter, but you can find the actual Shea Bay Powder on Amazon. Give me a two if you want me to make a video because I'm running out. I'm a couple five. I'm five minutes away from run being out, so I'm making some like tonight. So give me give me a two if you want me to do a video on Shea Bay Butter. Show you how to make it. Ooh, look at you seeing those tools. Ooh. Okay. I'm going to make it as soon as I get done with this. Y'all, I'm so excited. And I'm going to tell y'all right now, like, the only reason. Well, not the only reason. Hmm? Okay. Hold on, y'all. Hold on, y'all. Hold on. Hold on, sugar foots. Okay. Oh. Where? Where can you find rose nectar? Um, so there's this. It's only one website I've ever purchased rose uh, water from or rose nectar from, but I always make my own. The video that I posted yesterday um, shows you how to make your own rose, uh, ah, your own distilled rose water at home yourself. And literally all you need is water and a dozen roses. That's it. And you can get the roses from the store and you can get the water from the sink. Hello. No, no, no. Mm -mm. The recipe is the same. It's nothing. You literally do nothing but distill the water and then put vitamin E oil in it to keep it from going bad. Sorry, y'all. I got to get rid of it. Sorry. Hold on. Hold on. Lord. Oh, my goodness, guys. What happens when you have two children and they think that your room is theirs, too? Guys, hold on, guys. Okay. I'm gonna go some rose water tonight. Yes. 
No, low porosity hair isn't bad. High porosity hair isn't bad. It's just what you got. Because I have high porosity hair. And to me, if, if somebody was like, you got to pick one. You have to pick the one that's worse. Which one is worse? I would say that having high porosity hair is worse. And mind you, I have high porosity hair. Just because no matter what you put in your hair, you got to like pack it on because your cuticle is open. And until you figure out your hair, until you learn your hair and what your hair feeling like doing is an issue sometimes. But there's no problem. No, there's no one. Ah! Lord, oh Lord, help me, Lord. This is what happened. This is quarantine life, okay? I almost passed out. Oh Lord, my phone. I, I, I get all of my oils from Amazon. All of my oils, all of my butters and stuff, I get from Amazon. And if I, if I run out too fast, and I just wasn't thinking, I didn't remember to handle business, I'll go to Sprouts. But I get everything from Amazon. So make sure you head over to my website because um, I have different categories on my website. I have category for low porosity hair, category for high porosity hair, and it has all of my recommended products on there. Yeah. That was horrible. Hold on, y'all. I don't have a mirror. Y'all are my mirror, so. Actually, my Shea Bay recipe is new. Is new. Actually, it is. Actually, it is. It has a little more flavor in it now. Because the last time, well, the last time it was nothing wrong with it, but I just feel like the way that I made it, I could have made it stretch a lot longer. Even though it's lasting me for months, I still feel like I'm not trying to get this part extremely straight. I just want myself to remember. Actually, my husband don't like middle parts, but this is what's happening. No, I'm not thinking about bringing back my products. I'm sure ain't. I'm sure ain't. I love you, but I'm sure ain't, girl. No, I'm sure am not, girl. <laughs> Absolutely no. I love the freedom in my life, girl. If it happens, it's going to be because the Lord was like, hey, girl, do it, girl. Like the Lord himself is going to come in my room and say, hey, girl. He going to call me by my middle name. Latrice, listen, it's time. Because and he got the Lord gonna give me a real good reason. Other than that, no, nah, baby. Sorry. Oh, what is my favorite product? Mm. My favorite product is Shea Bay. It really is. It is for lip retention. Is my favorite product. So actually, because I have. Quite a few categories. So, you guys, really quick, can you start leaving it in the comments? Like, which which category of hair care do you want to know? Like, is my favorite products. Like, so for, like, silk presses, for hair color, for just natural hair. Let me know what you want to hear first. No, I've never used that one, Miss Newton. I've never used that one. Oh, you're still using my products? Aw. Why are we praying? Okay, so my favorite products for Silk Press, and it's so funny because I used to get so much crap with this, like when I first started doing hair because I was the youngest girl there and I have always used Kimra, always. Somebody just said that, and I'm pretty sure you are a client of mine because you already know, like, I love Kimbra hair products. And it was so funny because at first, like, I worked with a whole bunch of older black hairstylists, and they were like, that's for white girls. That's for white girls. Kimbra, 
that's not for black women that's for white girls but i love camera i love their product formulation i love how much attention they pay to their ingredients i freaking love a camera okay and they just have so many different collections so i actually this is why i love camera because i i have never i've always been a hairstylist that cares about like porosity and things like that so i love camera because camera allowed me to have a different shampoo and conditioner collection for every client so every client had their own shampoo and conditioner and it was super easy for me to know what I was doing. Like with camera, I could stick with that line. Like they have um, a shampoo, like the blue bottles are for thin hair and no, 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 are for moisturizing. And then the green bottles are for thick hair, like to thicken hair. You know what I mean? Like, so, and then... They have a, a collection specifically for color treated hair. So I just love, I just love camera. I do. They're consistent and I don't like to switch up because if my clients, oh Lord, I'm going to make this alfalfa piece sit down in a minute. If my clients come to me, then they want, they want the same result. And I just believe, and I'm not speaking against anybody, but I just believe that how, how can I give my client a consistent result when I'm constantly switching my products? So. <laughs> Thank you. Send all the hair juice. I love you. That was sweet. Oh yeah, actually. Okay. When I first, first started doing hair, I used Paul Mitchell. Because Paul Mitchell, when we was in school, that was the GOAT. But uh, Paul Mitchell, some of their products is cool. But they don't have as much um, of a selection as I like. So I go with Kimbra. Because Paul Mitchell, they have a set, set of shampoos and conditioners. And I mean, they're cool. But to me, their formulations don't go past Caucasian hair. I'm sorry. like Which is cool. I'm not tripping because that's not who they <laughs> owners are. Like, that's not, that's not the thing. That's not who they formulating for. So, Paul Mitchell is cool or whatever, but mm -mm. I don't even use Paul Mitchell color. I don't really like Paul Mitchell color like that. It's like too thick. It would be too heavy. I didn't like it. And then they kept changing their formula. No, no, no. I, ooh, that was a lie. It's Pravana. I used Pravana for a minute and then they kept changing it. Right now, I am using this vegan shampoo. Wait, for, no, wait. I use Kimra's. Um, I actually want to go get it. Give me a three if you want me to go get it. Right now, I'm using Kimra's uh, Black Activated Charcoal Shampoo. Because it cleanses my scalp like no other baby. Do you hear me? Dang. I don't know why I be asking y'all if y'all want me to go get stuff. Because I don't really be wanting to go get it. God damn it. Hold on. I'll be right back. Hold on. Okay, hold on. Okay. Ah! This is what happens when you live. Okay. So, y'all know I'm like plant-based and stuff. So, this shampoo and conditioner, I actually saw um, when I was in... Hold on, y'all. Sorry, it's just wet because I just got out of the shower. <clears throat> I was in Albertsons, either Albertsons or Smith's, and I walked past it, and I already used their body wash. It's called Beauty and Planet, and I used their one with Rose, and after that, I was so hooked. So, just on a regular day-to-day, -day, you can tell this was, oh, oh, oh. you can tell <laughs> this was almost gone. And my daughter, I taught her how to wash and condition her own hair. So that's why this bottle looks so rough. And then here is the shampoo. As you can see, it still got quite a bit of shampoo in there. But the conditioner is all the way down there. 
And then this, oh, baby, listen. I do not live life without this. I'm washing my hair with this at least once a week. At least once a week. My serious wash is with this. The rest of the week, honestly, it's just like co-washes unless I'm doing something crazy. But as you can see, this week isn't a week that I was washing my hair a lot. But I love this so much. And one of the main reasons that I selected this product is because I feel like Beauty and Planet is a company that really, really cares about the health of your hair because most shampoos and conditioners, you look on the back of the bottle, the back of the bottle does not tell you not to put it on your scalp. This conditioner tells you not to massage it in your scalp. And I love that because it explains like how to use the product because most women think that you're supposed to rub the conditioner into your scalp and you are not. <laughs> so I love that one. But this camera, camera is life. I have literally been using Kimber my entire career. Ooh, yes. And if you want links to the shampoos and conditioners, you guys, make sure you head over to my website. And when you go over to my website, like at the very, very top, it has different, You can, it has a little um, a menu where you can click and it has different options. It has an option for high porosity hair, has an option for low porosity hair, medium porosity hair, all of my favorite products, everything is on my website. I literally um read the comments on a weekly basis and then if i get a whole lot of you asking me the same questions then i make a blog post about it so always check my blog there's i promise you I, i'm willing to bet money that every question any of you have asked me i have already answered it over on my blog i can guarantee you guarantee and it's free guys you don't have to pay for anything okay so this is how this side looks right and it's actually getting better because it used to be like all over here and this side right here used to look worse than this side so that's how you know it comes back it's just the hydronaut baby i know how I grow hair back so don't be talking that stuff like who's the ain't got no edges your mama don't got no edges. Oh, mama. I say your mama so much that I play around with my kids. Like, your mama. And then I remember that I'm their mama. So, it's like, okay. Hold on. Y'all, I'm about to answer. Hold on. I don't got my glasses on. Ooh, if I'm not looking like silly from the color purple. <laughs> oh. I say I have low porosity hair. I need something that I could use in my hair daily for my scalp. What is your normal hair routine? Love you. I have high porosity hair, fine natural hair. Ah! Which of uh, the oils are both moisturizing and hydrating? Walnut oil, pumpkin seed oil, black sesame oil, moringa oil, and walnut oil are your two. Those are your two, baby. Walnut, ooh. Walnut oil is life. Do you understand what I am saying? Walnut oil is life. Give me a, give me a two if you want me to do a video on walnut oil. Oh, I don't want to get up again. <laughs> Hold on, guys. <laughs> mm. I'm not even mad. I hope robots do become alive. I'm so sick of this mess now. Lord, where is a robot when you need it? Siri, go get me my my edge control. Siri, go get like God dang it. Sorry guys. So, yes, I get all of my oils from Amazon, y'all. Everything. What well, I just want to show y'all. Just in case there's somebody on here that has it. So, normally, whenever it starts scabbing up is when it's beginning to heal. So, this is life. Like, y'all think 
that I rock it with Priority Naturals all the time because I'm trying to get money and stuff, which I mean, that's a thing. But I love their products because, man, when I don't feel like making my own stuff, right there. Because normally I use a mixture of walnut oil and my rose nectar on the spots. And when I'm out, because I'm waiting on my walnut oil, when I'm out, I use this. As you can tell, I'm out of this too. Um, no, I haven't tried sea moss hair mask because I have high porosity hair and I don't like the way that it leaves my scalp feeling. I need y'all to remember that everything is not for everybody and you need to take into account more than your hair. You need to take into account your porosity, your density, and your skin type. Okay? So, because if you if you have really really oily skin, it's the chances of you having extremely oily skin and a scalp this like <laughs> it's like the chances are slim to none. Normally, your scalp is just as clogged as the pores of your face are. So, be cautious of that, please. I wash my hair every other week. I have low porosity hair. Any advice on what I can use on my scalp? What is your daily routine like with your hair? What do you normally put on your hair? It depends on what you clog your cuticles and your follicles with. Best hair care products for children. The best hair care products for children, all you need to do when, as it pertains to your kids, is find out what their porosity level is and what their density is and use oils and butters for their porosity and density and do no heat, low manipulation styling because I find that a lot of women, especially black women, do way too much to their daughter's hair. And your daughter, until, until your kid hits like, like puberty real life puberty like i'm talking like almost like after high school their curls their curl pattern is still developing that hair is still developing so by you putting too much weight or too much pressure on the hair it does it does way more harm than good and to me that's why a lot of black girls don't have long hair because their mom just put all of those braids and stuff in their hair thinking that braids are protective styles but braids are only protective styles if the ends are protected properly for example if i didn't comb through this and all of my follicles and i have high porosity hair so if i didn't comb through this and all my cuticles are lifted and it's tangled like i put shea bay on my ends every time every time because it makes sure, it ensures me that my cuticle is going to stay smooth and my ends are not going to break. So, yeah, like you don't need to do all of that. That's not true. That low porosity hair is more prone to single strand knots. Actually, high porosity hair is more prone to single strand knots because the cuticle is high and lifted. So I have high porosity hair. So all my like think about this. It like it's think about this. I have high porosity hair. So all of my cuticles are lifted and they're going like this. So as the reason that you have the reason that you have single strand knots is because all of those hundreds of strands that you were supposed to lose every day are trying to get down hundreds of strands, thousands of strands that are crinkled up like this. So it is way, way easier for all of these strands to get down, to get down a cuticle that is completely flat and smooth than it is for a strand to get past a cuticle that's like this. So no, that is not true. High porosity hair is more prone to single strand knots because all of the cuticles are lifted and going in opposite directions and the hair that's shedding gets caught. And like I said, the on high porosity hair, the cuticle is like this. So it's so unless you have high low porosity hair and you just do not comb your hair, you're not getting knots like that. So that's not true. 
how you find your density density that's really easy so if you density means your hair is fine medium or thick so mine would be considered thick and if you have really 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 thin hair like most of us the older you get the more your hair starts to thin out so somebody who has hair where like you can see straight through their scalp that would be low density so that's how um you measure it out I know mango butter is great for the hair. Not as heavy as shea butter, but mango butter still should not go on the scalp because the particles are too big and they are they are too big to go inside of the hair follicle. So they just sit on top. Mango butter is for retention, not growth for the scalp. Your scalp does not need oil. Your body produces a natural oil called sebum. And that is why people with straight hair have to wash their hair a couple times a week or once a week because it is easier for oil to get down a straight line than it is for it to get down a curl. It is very simple. Um, you find your porosity. I already explained density. You find your porosity by getting a cup of lukewarm water with a piece of clean hair. Clean hair. You must make sure that it's clean. And you must make sure that the water is lukewarm because cold water closes the cuticle and hot water opens the cuticle. So, ah, hold on, y'all. Hold on, hold on, hold on. So then you take the cup and you fill it up and then you drop your hair in the cup. If your hair goes all the way to the bottom, that means you have a cuticle that is open. So your hair has filled up with water. It's gonna flow all the way to the bottom. That is high porosity hair. If it's floating in the middle, that is medium porosity hair. And if it is staying on the top, it is low porosity hair because the cuticles are closed no water can get in. So it's flowing. It's flowing. It's zinning out on top. Like Big Sean. Should I do? Okay. Because I'm spilling the beans, but y'all deserve the beans being spilled because y'all here. So it's a you part. Should I leave hair out in the back or no? I'm going to leave it up to y'all. Yes or no? Yes or no? No, don't leave her out. Okay. We got two no's. That's enough for me. What hair oils with essential oils are good for the hair shaft? And Scott, walnut oil and almond oil are my favorites. But remember, unless your scalp is... Unless your scalp is... Like... You don't need to... No. You don't need to oil your scalp, guys. Only time you should be putting oil on your scalp is if you giving yourself some type of hot oil treatment. And then after that, you washing it out. Your scalp produces its own oil. You do not need to oil your scalp. You don't. You do not. You can give yourself hot oil treatments. You do not need to oil your scalp, guys. You don't. You don't. Mm-mm. What about Vicks? Vicks Vapor Rub? Absolutely a routine is important. I want to ask, I want to, not just you. I want to ask all of y'all this question. Is a routine, is routine maintenance important on your car? Is routine maintenance important on, in your house? Like you have to get maintenance on everything in your life. There is nothing in this world that you do not have to get regular maintenance on to keep up with you gotta brush your teeth every day you gotta clean your belly button every day you gotta wash your butt every day you gotta do all this stuff every day your hair is no different okay so there are hundreds and thousands of herbs Ooh, that rubber band just gave up on life there are hundreds and thousands of herbs on this planet thousands and google is your best friend youtube is owned by the google so i promise you all you have to do is type in like what type of oils are good what type of oils are not related to nuts what type of like there are thousands of i mean thousands of them every nut can be made into an oil 
at almost every any like vegetable plant almost anything could be pressed and you can get oil out of it you can get oil out of your carrots you can get you can get alcohol you can literally go get vodka right now and crush up some carrots and put the carrots in the vodka and the water i mean the water yeah the water from um oh not the water sorry i can't talk because i'm trying to pay attention the oil from the carrots will come out and you'll have carrot oil right there so you just have to know your porosity levels and your daily routines, all of that. Oh, yeah. You guys, let me know what is the most ridiculous. I don't know if y'all read that, but what is the most ridiculous hair remedy that you guys have heard of? I'm not going to name none. I just want, because y'all know, I'm pretty sure y'all know what mine's are. But I want to know what, what ones do y'all think are just plain old doom. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Yaya. Okay, who's using Vicks Vapor Rub? I don't think I've heard of, I, I mean, I think I did a while ago, but I don't remember. Yeah, because they were using it on the scalp, I think. And once again, it proves the point like, oh, Lord, Lord, I don't know what y'all be watching on the TV. I just wish people would start like sending me videos and stuff. I mean, no, because then that's going to stress me out. I just don't understand where people are getting this information from. So notice how I'm using three different combs. This one with the really wide teeth, then this one. And then once I put my last little bit of Shea Bay on, I run through one last time. So this keeps my knots from forming because I have hundreds of hairs falling out of my scalp every day. watermelon water well as long as they're not fermenting stuff i don't really i don't re i don't have a problem with people using natural herbs or extracting stuff like i taught you guys how to make rose water i use rose water every day i don't mind doing that but when you talk about growing bacteria and fermenting stuff like when people can't even remember like i'm trying to figure out how everybody is scientists and could grow stuff, but can't nobody remember to comb their hair and take their weave all right. But everybody, Bill Nye, the science guy, growing stuff in the damn kitchen. Well, once again, there is no one-size-fits-all answer to that. It depends on what your daily routines are, how you're eating, because you can have low porosity hair in high density. You can have low porosity hair in medium density. It, I don't know. It depends on what type of low porosity hair you got, sugar foot. I don't know. Once again, you guys, there is no one size fits all. A lot of questions I can't answer, but it's a lot that I can't. I like to use this analogy. I'm not talking to you specifically, but you know, remember the analogy that I use for the mechanic. Y'all know that analogy. No rice water kills your hair. Yeah. Especially if you have low porosity hair. With glycerin, it depends. Once again, it depends on porosity. With glycerin, with all of these things that everybody's like, oh, this is bad, this is bad, this is bad. It's because people have YouTube channels and they see they see one video like, oh, I think glycerin does this to your hair. I wonder if people know that this is possible. And then they make a video, it goes viral, and everybody thinks that that person wrote the Bible scripture on the conversation. Okay? So it just depends on your porosity. For me, like even with sulfates, a lot of people are all oh, like sulfate shampoo. Like, listen, sulfate shampoo has never hurt me. 
like never but a lot of naturals have high porosity hair extremely high porosity hair self-inflicted high porosity hair and their cuticles are bust wide open so when they put soft face shampoo on their hair it makes their hair flip a lid but that doesn't mean the soft face are bad it just means that you've stripped your cuticle guys so I don't I don't subscribe to none of that stuff because none of the things that people push can be backed by science like none of it I know people don't care about that stuff anymore but you know oh y'all said don't leave my hair out in the bag I gotta untwist this thing what ingredients do the most slip for hair well, to be honest with you guys, when it comes to hair products, the thing that's giving you slip in hair products is silk amino acid. Your hair having slip does not equate to a product being great. You can have, like I already told you guys um, about rice water. I already told you guys, you've actually already seen what rice water does to your hair if you have a low porosity hair or medium porosity hair under electronic microscope. But you can put, like I told you guys about coconut oil and how coconut oil is protein seeking. It'll still make your hair feel amazing. If you put silk amino acid in freaking anything, it's going to make it feel great. You can put silk amino acid in jello before you put it in put before you put it in your hair before it gets firm in the refrigerator and put it in your hair, you're going to feel slip. You guys, stop looking at the way stuff feels and the way stuff looks as a measure of what works for your hair and what's healthy for your hair because you can put silk amino acid in anything and that it'll create slip you having slippery hair does not equate to the product being good guys it doesn't so i don't i don't look for hair some more shedding i don't look for products based on the way it makes hair feel. I select products based on the chemical makeup, based on, hi baby, based on the butters that they're using, based on the oils that they're using, based on the essential oils that they're using, based on how large or small the particles are in the oils, based on if whether or not this oil is gonna be good for high porosity hair or low porosity hair. It, stop being worried about slip and how the curls look that means nothing you guys stop focusing on how it looks and how it feels you need to be pressed about what is my density what is my porosity how hard is it for my hair to absorb moisture how easy is it for my hair to absorb moisture does my hair react good to protein or does my hair react bad to protein? These are the questions that you need to be asking yourself. Not, do my hair look like the 4B picture? Do my hair look like the 4A picture? No, that's not going to help your hair grow. It's not. Just like you can't pick your, your lotion depending on <laughs> the complexion of your skin. All dark skin people can't use the same damn lotion just because you dark skin. Damn. Like, it's crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy, guys. It's crazy. And if you can't tell, it is very annoying. Because <laughs> it's not something that just came around. I've been doing her for 13 years. So, so go to school for more than just being a cosmetologist. And then one day somebody make a video of fictional information. And then have to explain to people that it's not real. For years, it's like... <sighs> huh now there's a certain lotion yes girl if you got dry, if you have dry skin if you have if you have dry skin you can't use a lotion that is meant to dry skin out so yeah it's always been like that there's no oh now it's like that no it's always been like that you're always supposed to use a certain type of lotion. <laughs> like, always. <laughs> what do you mean? It didn't just pop up today, girl. Come on, girl. We got the same name now. You can <laughs> get your life right. Come on, girl. Nah.
Yes, baby boy. What's wrong? I love you. <laughs> it's heavy. But you, mm, I mean, uh, I'm not going. Yeah, don't ever try pr pr uh, protein on your hair because you're low porosity. Your hair gonna pass out if you put protein on it. Protein is supposed to make your hair stronger. It's supposed to make the cuticle stronger when it's weak. So, uh, low porosity hair is already from Chicago and Detroit. So, you don't need to put nothing extra on there. Or it's going to start shooting. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm from the D. Everybody don't shoot in the D. I ain't never shot nobody. My husband, ain't, he ain't never shot nobody. What is the best way to protect my hair from sweat once I've straightened it? Lovely. Brie Monroe, you be in here all the time. So I want you to know that when I say this, I'm not being a smart ass. I love you. I do because you're always supporting me. But girl, if I knew the answer to that question, trust and believe I would not be on here right now talking. People would be like, Oprah who? Who is Oprah? We'll be talking about Sendai, okay? There is nothing. There's, okay, you asked me that, and I'm not being rude. I just love to give analogies. That's like you asking me, girl, how I get, how I keep from getting wet in the rain with no umbrella? Like, girl, you cannot. You, there's no, you can't. You, there's no doing that. Once your scalp gets wet, that's it. The only thing you can do to keep your scalp from getting wet is not sweat. Once your hair gets wet, the hydrogen bond in your hair breaks and your hair is going to revert back to curly. That's the way science works. And trust and believe. When If I was to figure out a way to protect your scalp from getting wet, girl, listen to me. When I find it, I'm, I'm writing you first because you're the one who, girl, listen, I've been looking. There's, there's not a way. There is no way. To keep your hair from getting wet. If your scalp gets wet, your hair is going to get wet. That's just how it go. There's no way you can stop it. And that's what I try to tell people. I remember I said this in a video and people was like, what? What she trying to say? Silk presses are not for everyone. My mama. My mother, silk presses are not for my mom. My mother is going through menopause. So, I give my mother a silk press. And before I get, before I'm able to unwrap her hair, the entire front of it is wet because she's going through menopause. My mother is not a candidate for a silk press. I know y'all like what y'all see, but uh, listen, tell yourself a silk press may just not be for me, okay? Because there is nothing she can do. I see so many people, they'll make comments on my videos like, Oh, I wish I could come to you because I went to this one girl. And I'm not talking to the person who asked this question. They'll be like, oh, I was talking. I went to this one girl and my hair looked good at first. But then I went to the gym and my hair sweated out and I wasted my money. Sugar foot. She has nothing to do with that. She can't control. Just because she flat ironed your hair don't mean she can control the way sweat come down. Sugar foot. So I really need everybody to remember that there's nothing you can do. If you sweat in your head and you cannot control it, you are not a candidate for a silk press. Bottom line. Sorry, guys. Every style is not for every person. I love you, but it's not like for me. I sweat in my head when I sleep. I'm not really a candidate for a silk press. Nah, come on, sugar foot and not you. But that's a problem with the with the Americas. I see so many people dog and hairstylists like, girl, it is not her fault that you be sweating in your head. What do you want her to do? Lord. Lord, I'm the girl. Not you, girl. PTSD moment. PTSD. If ever y'all ask a question and I go on a tangent, it's because I had a person who complained about that. <laughs> Yeah, so you you if you sweat in your head, no, no silk press. 
There's nothing you can do. There's nothing. Listen, if there was something, I would find it. But I sweat in my sleep. I'll spend all day still pressing my hair or however many hours it takes me to still press my own hair. And then I'll, I don't know, clean up something and I sweat in my head. And I did it for no reason. And I do hair. And I would like to think I'm pretty good at silk presses, but that's, it's the science, girl. It's the scalp, girl. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so silk presses are not for everybody. They're not. And I used to tell people that, like, y'all, not you, babe. I know you get it. But I used to have women really, like, write your reviews. Like, she's, I thought she was good. I looked at her pages and my hair... My hair was so beautiful when I left and then I went to the gym and I went to high yoga and then when I unwrapped my hair, it was back to normal. She wouldn't give me a refund. Like, y'all are crazy because people, not y'all, but people are nuts and they expect you to be building out a science guy for $25. I swear to God, y'all are crazy in the mug, baby. Crazy in the bits, it was, baby. I'm lost. I am not for my toddler. Not sure if that would be. Don't put nothing on your toddler's hair, but something to protect her ends. Like you could put like walnut oil on her ends or alma oil on her ears. Test her porosity. See what her porosity level is. And then look on my website and see which products work best for different levels of porosity. But if she's a toddler, let her hair toddler. Let it, let it, let it tick and tot. She little, she ain't going nowhere. She don't got nowhere to go. We on quarantine. Let her hair live its little life. Because a lot of women stunt their daughter's hair from growing and don't even know. They daughter end up never having long hair because their mama was trying to be top hairstylist, queen of the century. Not you. I'm just saying. You can you good. We have an we have a um another moderator in here. You good, baby. Thank you, Yaya. I appreciate you, lovely. You always here, baby. I appreciate you. Okay, y'all ask me some questions because I can't think of topics and call them at the same time. My hair is a lot thicker through the middle, so I'm combing this out, but I have to take the small tooth comb. Next, you see how it's getting a little snug? These would be knots. These would all be knots. That's I just pushed my headphone back in my ear like it was in there. Is it better to put a deep conditioner on silky wet hair or towel dry hair? Oh, on towel dry um dried hair. Because if you do it when the water is still dripping on it, you still have a small little barrier in between your hair and that. So just just dry off just a little bit. Like just damp, damp, just a little bit. Or not even, actually, you don't even need to, no, don't use a towel. Just with your hands. Just wring it out a little bit so it's not dripping wet. But it ain't that complicated, y'all. Y'all don't got to think about that much stuff. It ain't, it ain't that complicated. Just try to focus on not having it on the scalp. If y'all have asked me a question and I haven't seen, hold on. Tips for self trimming at home. Um. So, once again, y'all, don't get mad. But when I went to cosmetology school, <laughs> they wasn't teaching people how to teach people how to do what you learn them by themselves. Okay. So, I don't even trim my own hair. All I can say is to practice on a mannequin first. And maybe, I don't know, Bill, please do not make, go the other way. Why would you come that way? Go, okay, say hi and then go back downstairs, please, my love. Okay, go back downstairs. I forgot what you asked me. 
You're going to have to ask me again. I don't know. I have children. I forgot. When will you get the video? It will be sometime this week, y'all. I got to film it and then edit it and then post it. Just make sure your post notifications on. It'll be this week for sure. Oh, trimming at home. That's what it was. Um, you, you just really should practice. Like, practice on a dial or something. or Because remember, like, looking at hair looking directly at hair it took me like uh like two years to perfect uh, more than two years to perfect so there's no like oh secret like hold it at a 20 degree angle and then you could I, you just have to really really practice like maybe practice on a mannequin first and then you're gonna need a mirror in front of you and a mirror behind you but i don't know how to tell you how to learn it quick because i learned mine years and years of work i've been like i've been a licensed cosmetologist since i was 19 i just turned 30 this year so i didn't i there's no way i could tell you like real quick like okay real quick i'm gonna tell you what i learned in like six years real quick i don't know baby trimming hair is something that it's like even even for me like i said i've been licensed since i was 19 and i think i i trim my own hair like good for the first time maybe like last year and that was only because i had to because i'm a professional hairstylist and i do not trim my own hair unless i have to now i have to because of corona actually it was less than that a year ago <laughs> no they're not okay people listen Y'all need to start doing y'all research. Everybody that has their own rice water products, go and look at the race of the owner. And I'm willing to bet money. I'm willing to bet money that the owner of these companies do not have brown skin. But they see how y'all talk about rice water. They see how... how big of a topic it is and how willing people are to attack each other over rice water it's a trending topic and it's business they gonna make bread i think that it's a business move for them but no if rice water if rice water was this amazing thing and it had all of these benefits they would have been started making products over it but no there are people that okay just like with a company there are people who made for a product formulation it's people who are made to um, buy the, like the shipping and the labels, the graphic design. And then there are people paid to search on YouTube and Instagram for trending topics to search what people are using. Because pay attention, no products, no natural products said anything about 4A, 4B, 4C, nothing until it went viral on YouTube. But keep in mind, Andre Jackson made the curl typing chart in the 1990s, the early 1990s. I want to say like 93. So when the curl typing chart was first created, I was like three years old. But it just took off because people they just started putting on the bottles because there are people doing market research. I do not care what anybody says. If you if you are buying rice water and they do not have specifically on the bottle only for high porosity hair, you should not trust them because a business should tell you that any type of rice water is a protein treatment that is only good for high porosity hair. And I don't even think it's good for high porosity hair. And the last thing I'm gonna say about it is this. You guys think that if a bottle says rice water on it if it says a hundred percent rice water hold on let me put this in the ponytail let's say this bottle right here this is the product that has rice water in it right people think that this if it's a hundred percent rice water people think that this entire bottle is full of rice water and maybe it's it's like this much like from my finger up of other additives. That is not how it goes. Legally, in most states, products only have to have, this bottle only has to have maybe 1% of it with rice water in it. And the 1% of rice water 
It's a hundred percent rice water, but it can literally have this much rice water in it for them to put a hundred percent rice water on it. So it doesn't mean anything, but people are so easily manipulated. It's business. It's business. That's what it is. They in it to make money and they see how much money is in it. So people get into it, but it doesn't matter what company stands behind it. It's not good for your hair. Just like Johnson & Johnson made a product that gave a bunch of people cancer. And everybody that used it got cancer. Because they were like, oh my God, this is so amazing. And I'm not saying people that use rice water are going to get cancer. But y'all think that just because these product lines are putting stuff out there that is good for your hair. And that is not true. If they're not, if they're not saying, if a bottle does not say rice water for high porosity hair, girl, buy. And I bet money you won't see it. I bet money you won't see it. So, y'all can use that little boo-boo stuff if y'all want to. Little rice turds. And then y'all love calling it rice water. It's not rice water. The rice is in a bowl. <laughs> when you, before you cook rice... But anytime my mom has made rice my entire life, my mother soaks the rice first. And after she soaks the rice, then she throws the water that the rice was in away. And then she makes the rice. And she's done that my whole life. And when I was a little girl, my mama taught me that she did that because there's arsenic coated on the water. So they soak it to get the arsenic off. And then y'all soak y'all rice in water and then use the same water that you just soaked it in to put it on your hair. The rice is in the bowl. <laughs> the rice is in the bowl, girl. The rice is in the bowl, girl. Rose leaf conditioner. Oh, yes. I love that conditioner. I don't know. Y'all, I do not use that stuff. It's, it's, it's alive. So it's going to affect your hair as long as it's alive inside of the cuticle. And for low porosity hair, it's going to eat your hair up until it's off of the cuticle. That's how it go. So, and y'all don't have to believe me. Not right now. But when we get off here, just go on YouTube. Like, as soon as I sign off, go on YouTube and type in why I don't use rice water. Rice water ruined my hair. Just type that in and you'll see a bunch of people that validate everything that I've always said. So, next topic. Come on, y'all. Let's talk about something else. If y'all want to use rice, do it tonight. True. If y'all want to be, go ahead. The rice is in the damn bowl. It's, this is rice water. No, it's not. That's arsenic water. The rice is in the bowl. You just soak the rice off. That is crazy. Just like with walnuts, before you, before I make like walnut meat, you soak it to get anything that's on top of it off. That's with anything. You soak a whole bunch of different stuff to get stuff off. Y'all, oh, this rice, the rice is in the damn bowl. It ain't no rice. I can understand if y'all was blending the rice. No, that's starch and the arsenic. Like, what are you talking about? People are crazy. African shea butter is good, but it, this is this is shea butter. This is shea butter mixed with green tea. And this is shea butter. Um, this is the last of my shea butter. As you can see, I'm making some today. So shea butter is for length retention. I use shea butter all the time. That's what I've been using this whole time. But you will never catch it on my scalp, ever. And as soon as I get done with this, I'm going to get some rose water and I'm going to take a cotton ball and rub it across my scalp because I'm sure a little bit could have gotten there and I want to make sure that my follicles are not clogged. So, yeah. Shea butter, coconut oil, it should not go on the scalp. I'm not just trying to ruin your day. I don't do it, but I mean. <laughs> what do I know? I've only been licensed since I was 19. Thank you, baby. No, apple cider vinegar is not a good detangler. Apple cider vinegar is a acid. Apple cider vinegar is a natural acid. You can unclog your sink with apple cider vinegar, guys. 
So yeah, and the reason that you can unclog your sink with apple cider vinegar is because it's an acid. So it burns away all of the things that are inside of the sink. You can also clean battery acid off of your car. <laughs> You can clean battery acid off of your car. I mean, you can clean battery acid off of any battery with apple cider vinegar. And please trust and believe your hair is not as strong as battery acid. So if you can burn, dissolve battery acid with apple cider vinegar, why would you put it on your hair? No, I have a whole video about apple cider vinegar. It is not, it does not go on the scalp on the hair shaft at all the only time apple cider vinegar should only be used the most twice a year and the only time apple cider vinegar should be used is if you being super dusty and you didn't went like three four months four five months without washing your hair properly because maybe you had braids in too long or maybe you had a weave in for too long and then you really 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 want to exfoliate your scalp you should only be putting a cotton putting it in a cotton ball and rubbing it across the scalp if you super dusty other than that it is dissolving your cuticle and i have videos to prove it that's what my um new series is about so when I get out of here, when we end this, uh, make sure you check the links that I'm going to leave in the description box below for my playlist because I already have videos telling you not to use apple cider vinegar on your hair. It is a acid, guys. Please stop using apple cider vinegar, Lord. But look, everybody wants to talk about what Asians do. We live nothing like Asian people do. Our hair isn't like theirs. They have the straightest hair in the world. Their cuticle is completely round and your cuticle, I'm follicle. Asians follicles are completely round. Your follicle is shut like this. Like they have a mainly plant-based country and we make up all of our foods in a lab. Like, it's not the same. Not to mention, we use rice that you can get from a dollar for, by a do, for a dollar at the store. And most people don't even know there are 40,000 different strains of rice. So trust and believe Asian women were not using the type of rice that you can get off wick. Like, Lord. And then they wasn't using the type of water we use. The water in Vegas is horrific. My, I don't even let my children drink the water in Vegas. They back then when they were doing rice water, they were getting purified waters out of wells and they were not taking the rice water and putting it in the corner, letting it ferment. They had buildings built for fermentation. That's what Asians did. What do you mean? They had buildings built for fermentation, kimchi and all of that other stuff, tofu, all of that fermentation. That was their thing. Like, y'all don't know how to ferment things. You don't know how to keep violent bacteria from growing. You don't know how to make sure it's only one type of bacteria growing. You have no idea. All you know is some girl named uh, Boom Chisha made a YouTube video and she had real long hair saying rice water grew her hair out and y'all all made the video. That's all you know. Because somebody said Asians did it. <laughs> it's just crazy. A video on our skin. What about our skin? So I cut off my ends because it was dry. Next, wait. Because it was dry. I washed it and my ends became what caused that I had the same length as. Wait, what? So I cut off my ends because it was dry. The next week I washed my ends became what could have caused that. But I don't know what they became because you said became and then period, girl. I don't know what they came. Excuse me. Mm. But that's the thing, like, look, 
If y'all want to listen to certain YouTubers, that's fine. But just make sure that as you listen to them, after you watch a video, let's say somebody come out tomorrow and start saying like, oh, don't use combs and brushes no more. Use the tampon papers uh, to, to do rollers or something. I don't know. Like, check porosity. Check facts. Density. Like, start checking facts, guys. Okay, just because, okay, a lot of times people think that just because they trim a little bit of hair off of their ends that automatically their ends are going to be perfect. If you cut your ends and they were still like ratted, that means you didn't cut enough hair. That's all. That just means you didn't cut enough. That means you still got some hair on there that needs to go, baby. I promise it's not. Because the thing is, and I'm not talking about you, most of the time we can't get we don't get the the results that we want because we looking for we looking for somebody to tell us something other than you got to cut it off there's no there's once the bonds in your hair are broken down that's it you cannot reconstruct them once your ends split you cannot put them back together that's just how it go when you mess up you got to cut it off i've done that before i've messed my hair up before and had to start all over that's how it go y'all Uh, you need to be trimming your hair at least every 10 weeks. Just in theory, if you were to use rice water, ABC, and then a neutralizer on your hair, your viewpoint to use none of the above. Curious. No, don't. You guys. No. Don't. Okay. Can we? I'm going to say this last thing. And can we please not, Lord God, in the name of the Lord. Oh, thank you so much for joining and becoming a member. Just know you need to check on the members page tomorrow before like in the morning check tomorrow on the members page in the morning so you can get your free link to my webinar you do not have to pay for the webinar all of my members are getting here free i love you thank you so much for joining But yeah, you guys, you have to keep up with your hair like on a regular basis. It's not something like I don't feel like doing this, but I have to detangle my hair. You see all of these, all of the shedding that I have on these combs. These all would have turned into knots. They all would have just slid down the middle. Ah! Ah, this about to be a knot too. Ah! Okay, sorry. Yay! Oh, it's going to be so exciting. Ooh, I've been working hard, too, on our sides and stuff. We're going to be making some money, okay? Y'all need to go ahead and become members and stuff. Yes. And it's super cool, love, because you can go ahead and join the group group later. But we'll we'll talk. We'll talk. Oh, yeah. Type in a three to celebrate our boo. <laughs> Well, you good, Veronica. If you cutting your ends every week, I mean every month, that's perfect. Perfect. Uh huh. Make sure y'all can all remember always go to my website. Head over to my website. Everything I've pretty much answered every question that y'all could possibly think of already on my blog. You just gotta look through it. There are different categories for each level of porosity. Just find yours and look through that blog, through my blog post. Oh, you love my website on Amazon. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, you guys, ask me some questions, please, because I... Is it okay to use... I don't like coconut oil, guys. Coconut oil is protein-seeking. I don't like coconut oil like that. I don't I don't use coconut oil for my hair like that. I had a moment where I thought you were supposed to use coconut oil too. But when I became an herbalist and I started studying herbs and fruits and vegetables and anything that grows from the ground, I learned that coconuts are protein seeking. So the last especially if you have high porosity hair, it's gonna make your hair crunchy as ever. The people that like coconut oil are people who, how can I say this? 
Hmm. No, I don't know how else to say it. Are people, oh, we got, got another member. Thank you. I don't see your name. Esther, hi. My, um, my high school's best friend, uh, middle name was Esther. Yeah, coconut oil only, that's what I was saying. The only people who like coconut oil have low porosity hair because their cuticle is closed. And so the coconut oil creates a really, really thick barrier over their hair shaft as it's trying to take the protein out. And so it makes their hair feel real slick and smooth. So, yeah, it's not a thing, guys. Should I cut my hair when it's straightened or curly? You, you cut your hair when it is straight. A lot of people, okay. Okay, let's, can we have a lesson about diva cuts? Can we talk about diva cuts? Give me a five if you are going to let me speak freely about diva cuts, please. Come on, please, because I, I need to explain. I really need to explain this dry and wet thing and cutting. Okay, so before the whole Team Natural movement took off, okay, right before it took off, Women were wearing weaves like crazy. They were either getting weaves or silk presses on a regular basis. That was the hair industry. But then once, <laughs> but then don't get mad y'all. But then once the Team Natural community started and once Team Natural and everything took off guys, then everybody started changing their interests and going in different directions. This is why I really, really think that it is important for everybody to learn. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Sorry, guys. My thing is, hold on, sorry. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, so this is why everybody thinks that it is okay because when everybody, whenever the Team Natural community took over, a whole lot of hairstylists were losing a lot of money. You got to think about it. If you a hairstylist that is having six seven clients a day and all of your clients are either getting a silk press or a weave and then overnight more than 20 percent of black women are like okay i'm not putting heat in my hair no more and i'm not wearing weaves hairstylists took a real big hit so they had to maneuver that's what you have to do as a hairstylist you have to maneuver so remember Y'all remember Diva Cuts? Diva Cuts came from the same lady that made Diva Curl. And if y'all do y'all research, the lady that created Diva Cuts is the same person who created Diva Curl. And she's getting sued by a whole bunch of people because their formulation started to change the curl pattern and started to give them chemical damage messing up their curl pattern. So Diva Cuts was created by a white woman, okay? I'm not, if you a white woman on here or if you not black, I'm not saying this against you, hear me out. It was created by a white woman. This is why I'm saying this. When you have naturally straight hair, so white people or if you're Asian and your hair is straight, the first thing that you learn in cosmetology school, you cut straight hair wet and you cut curly hair dry. If you walk into a Caucasian hair salon and you begin to give somebody's haircut, somebody if somebody comes in, if you're a hairstylist and somebody comes in, unless you have a specific technique and, and that's still dusty. If somebody comes in and they're Caucasian and they want a haircut and you blow dry their hair and then give them their haircut, they're going to be looking at you like you're crazy. Because if you have naturally straight hair, Caucasian hair, Asian hair, your hair swells when it's dry. And if your hair is swollen, you cannot get an accurate cut. So Caucasian women, color their, they cut their hair wet, okay? Because when it's dry, the hair swells and they cannot get an even cut. So in return, black women, our hair, or curly hair in general, when your hair is curly, your hair, when your hair is wet, it swells, the, the curls, right? <laughs> So whenever your hair swells because it's wet, you can't get an even cut. Just like in Caucasian hair, it swells when it's dry, okay? Our hair swells when it is wet. So ours is the reverse. You are supposed to cut curly hair dry. 
You are supposed to cut curly hair dry because then you can actually see the ends. I don't care what anyone says. You're not, that's just like if you have a bunch of strings hanging down. If you have a whole bunch of curly strings hanging down, don't think about hair. Just think about a whole bunch of curly strings. Think about like a hundred strands of dental floss hanging from my fingers and they all curled up. Are you going to get a more even cut on all of these, on all of the dental floss that's dingling down, that's curly? Are you going to get an even cut with them straight or are you going to get a more even cut going like this across a whole bunch of curly pieces of dental floss? You're going to get an even cut with it straight. That's how it goes. You are supposed to cut your hair. If you have curly hair, whether you black, Hispanic, it doesn't matter. You cut curly hair dry, period. <laughs> and you cut straight hair wet, period. Like, I don't like, I don't know, like water is wet. And then, and then diva cuts. This is the last thing I'm gonna say. Diva cuts was created by a white woman and they cut their hair wet, right? They already cut their hair wet and they will cut their hair wet and then scrunch it because that's how they made their the little bit of curls or the little bit of wave pattern that they had. They would use mousse and all of her products that were really high alcohol based because she has a lot of oil in her hair or her hair shad because her hair is straight like we talked about earlier. So they white women, that's where diva cuts came from. Go, research it yourself right now, right now. Google, well not right now because you in here, but if you, if some, if you have another computer next to you, Google picture of the woman who created diva cuts. You're going to see a white woman. <laughs> You're going to see a white woman. A white lady created diva cuts, not a black woman. And then at the same time she created that, black women were taking the hit because black women were stopping putting heat in their hair and getting weaves. So they like, oh, we can do diva cuts too. No, no. And she saw that a lot of black women were buying it. So she was like, oh, I can make money here too. Understand business. It's business. It is business, y'all. Diva Cuts was created by a white woman <laughs> to give volume to straight hair that is cut wet. That's why Diva Cuts are done wet because white women cut their hair wet and Diva Cuts were, it was created. The entire technique was created by a white woman who is getting sued as we speak for her products breaking off hair and changing curl patterns so i do not like diva cuts at all i actually have multiple videos on my channel from me fixing diva cuts so yeah stick that in your pipe and smoke it are there instructions on how to make shea bay cream or is it on your website it's on my blog and then i'm making i'm actually after as soon as we get done on here i'm recording another one so keep your post notifications on y'all have that no later than next week do you recommend I just cut off all my single strand knots? No, you don't. How often do you, um, beautifully you, how often do you comb your hair in a week? Ooh, yeah, give me some emojis if you're excited for the next Twist Out Tuesday. Do you think it's necessary for natural hair to use the lock method? I don't even use the lock method. Somebody made up the lock method. The lock method is in no nothing, nowhere. I don't even know what that is. So I'm not going to comment on it. It's not. No, there's y'all. All of these methods. Y'all, please understand what social media is. Please understand what YouTube is. The more views they get on these videos, the more money they make. The lock, I don't even know what that is. And most people actually know I don't like the lock method. Most people who had dusty ends said they use the lock method. I don't, I probably do know in my head, but I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what the lock method is. As y'all can see, hair is not that complicated. Y'all have been watching me grow my hair out for the last year. And I've been on here with y'all. All I am doing is taking a comb, parting my hair, putting oil on my ends, combing my hair out from my ends up to my roots, putting Shea Bay on my ends, and putting my hair in a twist. Like, you don't need to do no lock method. No. I don't understand. And understand that a lot, unless y'all sit under a dryer 
and getting y'all hair 100% dry, you're doing more harm to your hair than good. Give me a three if you want me to break down the reason why you're doing more harm to your hair than you're doing good whenever you're stretching out your hair and then flat ironing it or, you know, just letting it air dry overnight and then putting heat in it. Let me know. Give me a three if you want me to tell you. It's going to be a scientific reason, y'all, but... Ooh. Okay. So. <laughs> oh. I'm going to let y'all get a couple more threes. Hold on. Hold on, y'all. Sorry, y'all. Sorry, oh, cause my phone's acting weird. Okay, so you guys, I really, really, really want y'all to understand this. <laughs> this is the way to make sure that your hair grows and you retain length and you have really, really long hair very fast and you can reduce shedding you're going to reduce flakes and build up it is extremely hold on one second baby because i'm gonna forget what i was gonna say it is extremely important that you keep your follicles clean and clear and free from debris if your follicles can breathe then the way that god already made your body to grow your hair out it, it'll happen naturally there are blood vessels under your scalp and those blood vessels are connected to a bulb and that hair bulb is connected to the hair follicle. The blood, under, the blood vessel is what's stimulating your hair growth. So if there's something internally wrong, sometimes the blood vessels won't stimulate all the way. So that could be one thing, okay? And then if you are constantly using products that do not work for your level of porosity, your scalp will suffocate the same way that it, the same way that you would suffocate if you couldn't breathe, if you don't get oxygen. So as long as you are cleansing your scalp on a regular basis, and as long as when you do different protective styles, your ends are protected because we think that just because we put braids in our hair, it's a protective style. No. Before you braid your hair, you need to put some type of retention something on it. Because if you don't, like for example, when you have braids, one of the first things that starts to pop out is your ends. So if you haven't put any type of protectant on there, if you just braid and stuff and just slapping stuff on the scalp, because this is what most people do. Most people get a protective style, they get braids, and the only place that you put any product is here. Y'all, this is what y'all do. And this is what we've been doing since we was little. So because our grandma and them did it, we think that it's something we supposed to do. We take a bunch of oil, like a glob of stuff. I'm just take because I need something for my lips. Anyway, we just take a big glob and just... And clog the pore. Completely clog the follicle. And then, some of y'all gonna get mad when I say this, but oh well. Like... We love, people love to be like, uh-uh, because my great-great-grandma did this or my great-great-great-grandma used to use um, Crisco. Y'all, if you black, if you are African-American and you black, your great-great-grandma was a slave. They wasn't, it wasn't, if there was no slave hair parlor over here where they had the best of the best, they used what they had. They were putting Crisco on their hair and they was using petroleum on their hair because that was all people had. When my grandmother was using petroleum and stuff like Blue Magic, black people couldn't even use the same water fountains that white people could use. So why do y'all think that just because our grandparents were using them that that's, those are the products that we're supposed to use? No, that's not true, guys. 
That's not true. So if you want to, if you want to make sure that your hair is growing long and thick, you must stop clogging your follicle. You have to stop putting heavy oils and butters on your scalp. And before you listen to somebody on YouTube, including me, I'm saying walnut oil is amazing. And I'm going to give you, I'm going to do a full fledged video on walnut oil, how to make it, all of that. But whenever I do it, after I get done with the video, the reason that I say, okay, go to my blog. I'm not telling you to go to my blog so you can buy something. I'm telling you to go to my blog after I make a video because on my blog, over on my blog, I back up everything that I say with facts. Every video that I have ever made, I say, okay, head over to my blog. And when you read my blog, I'm dropping facts. Fact after fact after fact. For the rose water, there is a blog post that tells you all of the benefits, all of the botanicals, all of the an um, antiseptic properties, everything. Everything that you need to know, I back it up with facts over on my blog. Because I am an herbalist. I am a nerd. I grow vegetables. This morning, I was up at 5 o'clock in the morning harvesting green onions. Like, with a nature lady shirt on with my plant mommy socks on. That Like, guys... I'm all for using natural remedies, but ones that make sense for you. Oh, girl, you were stuck in the elevator, girl. Oh, Lord, I'm glad you're back, girl. But y'all, no, the people that are still relaxed, I don't leave y'all hanging. You, you guys think that there's a difference between relaxed hair and natural hair. The reason that I'm not like, relaxed people do this and natural people do this. I'm not saying that because the only difference between relaxed hair and natural hair is the bonds have been reconstructed. That's it. And for whatever reason, and I'm not speaking to the person who asked the question, for whatever reason, we make a big deal when black women reconstruct the bonds that hold their hair together, but when other races do it, it's not a big deal. Give me a two if you know who Guy Tang is. Give me a two real quick if you know who Guy Tang is. Please, give me a two real quick if you know who Guy Tang is. Please, give me a two if you know who Guy Tang is. Okay, Guy Tang, for those who do not know, is a very, very famous um hairstylist colorist and he's asian so asian people have extremely straight hair guy tang gets a perm a perm because we call it the wrong thing a relaxer is what black women get a relaxer is when you go from curly hair to straight hair okay and a perm is when you go from straight hair to curly hair White women and people with naturally straight hair get perms all the time. The very first hair salon that I ever worked at, um, it was only me and this, uh, it was me and two other black hairstylists. And I'm actually, I still talk to both of them. Well, I mean, we're still cordial. I should say that. Um, but one, the other one was a white lady and then the other two were Asian and they kept perms. They, I mean, one was white and the other one was Asian. They kept perms. Which is not a big deal. When I the last um time when I was doing the pop ups for Sheer Sheer and Look Style Society, with ev almost every day, because it's the majority of the women that are there are white women. The majority of the stylists that were there, and they're like great people, like great people. That's why I don't, I'm not like we ain't even gotta go there. But anyway, they would all be getting perms like all the time, and I you know when they get perms because it smells like rotten eggs. When I was in cosmetology school, I hated Thursdays with a passion to the point that when I did hair professionally, one of my off days was Thursdays because Thursdays was the day that all of the old women, all of the senior citizens came in and all of the senior citizen women, white women got perms. They all got perms. And it was this one lady that I always used to get and I will never forget. She was real tall and her name was Miss Joanne. And Miss Joanne, she wasn't funny acting or nothing, but she loved her some Mexican men. And she said Mexican men love women with curly hair. And she loved the way I did her perm. So she would come in every single week. And she would only be getting perms like 
like maybe once a month, but she will always come in for me to give her a perm rod set. And she would get the small, I want to say the smallest ones are the blue ones. And so she would have me give her the smallest rods and then she wouldn't let me pick them out. Uh, well, no, no, she only let me pick them out at the root. So she would have a little afro. So like, but for whatever reason, we only make it a big deal when black women change the natural texture of their hair. There's nothing, the only thing that you need to be worried about if you have a relaxer is putting protein back in your hair because once you get a relaxer um once you get a relaxer you definitely have high porosity hair which isn't necessarily a bad thing but you've rearranged the bonds that hold your hair together so your cuticle is open so now you just have to make sure that you're using products that are high in protein period there's no difference. Mo it's I some people y'all ain't gonna like when I say this. Oh well. Um honestly, my clients, clients that will come to me that I've never seen before. If I had two clients, if I had one client that I've never seen before and she haven't had her hair done in two years and she got a relaxer and, and she haven't had a trim in two years, but she has a relaxer. And then I have this person over here who's natural and haven't had a trim in two years. I'll put this on my father's ashes. The one that has a relaxer that haven't had a trim in two years has healthier hair or ends look better than the one that's natural. Oh, everything. Because a woman that has a relaxer, she's not putting as much tension on her ends. Most naturals, like, y'all probably can't see this, but I am squeezing with my fingers. And this is letting my roots know, like, all of the pressure. So if I pull, my hair isn't coming from here because all of the pressure is going to go on these two fingers. But y'all just be like, no. No, and then you want to do it when it's wet. No. Our hair is made up of hydrogen bonds. And hydrogen bonds love other hydrogen bonds. And I don't know, we all learned this. What is water? The abbreviation H2O. What does the H stand for? <gasps> I think it may be hydrogen. So hydrogen bonds love other hydrogen bonds. So when H2O gets on your hair, the hydrogen bonds break and they just be like, oh, I love you. Give me a hug. I'm so loose. They be feeling all in love. Like, oh, give me a hug. Oh, honey, whatever you like, honey, I do for you. You want a French roll? We do a French roll. That's what we do. Is that what you want? Is that what you like? That's how it goes, guys. Stop believing these people. They don't know what they're talking about. Most of these people are watching YouTube videos like, oh, that's interesting. I'm going to make a video like that too. And then y'all, they make it. And then you argue with somebody who actually spent like $100,000 over the last 13 years. I learned from you this angle. Mm -hmm. And I'm not, listen, I am not tripping on y'all for not knowing that. Like... If you don't study it, I don't expect you to know. I'm only mad at the people who don't know because they didn't study it and didn't want to argue with the people who've spent their lives studying it. I was talking to my husband <laughs> yesterday and he started laughing, but I was so irritated. I was serious. I'm like, nobody does that. Nobody goes into the doctor's office and then they put, they go to um take your blood pressure and then you be like, uh-uh. Where you get that from? Where you get that testosterone come from? Because, uh-uh, just one or, mm, where you get those cotton swabs from? Because I was on YouTube and I saw this one doctor and he be using these cotton balls and they look way smaller and they said that it's better for the environment. So I feel like my copay shouldn't even be that much because your Q-tip's not even as expensive as him and his office is bigger than yours. Y'all don't do that. <laughs> y'all don't do that you sit your ass down he say coughing hiccup you co <coughs> is that enough and then you keep it moving that's how it go but then y'all go in with a hairstylist and she tell y'all something everybody want to argue I'm just trying to get y'all close up and I have this shea bay on this comb so you see that 
these would stick right now i'm getting off all of the ends that are sticking to my cuticle because i have high porosity hair so i will not get single strand nuts So when you combing through and you feel like you can't get through, that's because you are combing past. Mm. It's because you combing past some of that hair that came off. They probably will later. I don't know. Or maybe they are showing up. Y'all just not. I just feel the way. Like, I be in here telling y'all stuff. That I spent all of this money learning. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just got my student loans paid back off. And I'm just telling y'all all this stuff that I had to learn. Y'all don't know what I had to go through to be in cosmetology school. I'm about to make all y'all feel bad. I'm about to make all y'all feel bad. Y'all don't know what I had to go through in cosmetology school to learn this. I went to cosmetology school. I finished cosmetology school in Las Vegas, Nevada. Okay? Y'all have no idea what stuff is like in Las Vegas, Nevada. Okay? I know stuff that I should not know. Out of a class full, y'all, I think I'm lying, I swear to God. A class full of, let's say, like 30 people, maybe three of us wasn't prostitutes or strippers. I know stuff that I should not know. I went to the library thinking it was a damn library. It wasn't no damn library. It was a damn strip club called the damn library. Okay, I know stuff that I should not know. Y'all have no idea what I went through. So everybody should be giving me a like right now because I'm sharing all of this information for free. But all you got to do is give me a thumbs up. I'm sharing this information for free and you can give me a thumbs up, okay? I used to have nightmares about stuff, okay? It be some freaky stuff. Y'all don't even know. Oh, I have a, oh my God, give me a, I want to tell this story. <laughs> give me a three if you want to know my biggest horror story from cosmetology school. Some of y'all may have heard it, but give me a three and say, yet yeah, three horror, three horror story. Come on, if you want to hear it. I'm stressed out just thinking about it. Hold on here, hold on, I'm about to get some chapstick and then I'm going to tell y'all the story. I'm stressed out thinking about it like, I'm... Uh -uh. <laughs> okay, so you know I love everybody. Okay, I love everybody. Okay, so don't get mad when I say this. Okay, because this is a horror story to this day. Oh, white guys creep me out. I'm sorry if you're a white lady because you, if you're a white lady that's my age. Then you got an old white daddy. I'm so sorry. But if, or your grandpa, not your daddy, your grandpa creeps me the hell out. Okay, so, oh Lord. Oh, I can't do that. I would tell the story and then I finish this. Okay, so what had happened was, um, <laughs> when you in cosmetology school, you have to do so many, um, I think, I hope my husband in here and he hear this. Babe, can you have one of the kids bring my charger because my phone about to die? Please. Yeah, grab your popcorn. Babe, can you uh, bring... Oh, I already said that. Had one of the children bring my charger. They're already outside the door. So, Lord... Okay, so I'm out of my business, right? And when you're in cosmetology school, you have to do everything. Cosmetology is everything from the top of the head to the bottom of the feet, right? So, pedicures was a thing. Huh, huh. And at first, everything was okay. I'm setting up my little pedicure, so... This old white guy comes in. And at the time, I didn't have no problems with old little chunky white guys. It was cool. But this day in particular, they like, oh, go get Mr. Jeff. And I'm like, okay. And so one of my friends, Bill, she was like, oh, she was like, yeah, Mr. Jeff gonna like you. And so my spirit told me it was some bullshit at that moment. But I just didn't listen to my spirit and I don't do that no more. So anyway, I go and I set stuff up. I come over there. He's like, oh, who are you? You Egyptian goddess. I'm like, whoa. Well, okay, never been to Egypt before, place I want to go, but all right. And so I come over there and I start, you know, doing, like doing a little procedure, doing all my little steps. I got everything set up. So then I put the cuticle, I just put the cuticle remover on that. I took the Q-tip and I start, oh, I'm stuttering. It stressed me out. So I took the Q-tip and I start rubbing it on the cuticle and he sat back. He was like, oh yeah, oh, that's the ticket, you Egyptian goddess. I was like, 
And so I'm like, okay. So I pushed the cuticle back. He, oh, that's the ticket. You Ethiopian queen. I said, oh no. Oh shit. And so everybody, apparently every, everybody else that I went to school with was shit. Jonah and, and Blail, if you watching this, and Lauren, if you watching this, kiss my ass because I'm still scarred. Like, oh God, I don't use MAC lip gloss to this day. <sighs> oh, I'm sorry. So, um, <sighs> I'm clipping his toenails or whatever, and it was when MAC lip gloss first came out. And remember, little mama, it's popping, it's popping, it's popping, <laughs> it's popping. So my lip gloss was popping, right? But that shit was not cool because I clipped this goddamn toenail and it was like slow motion. It was like, and it was right on my lip. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> and I am, y'all think I'm bullshitting. I am so extra like it's in situations like that i was like oh, <laughs> get it off ah, ah. so nobody would help i mean everybody was coming over there to help me but it took so long for them to get it off because everybody's like on the fucking floor like rolling around laughing and i'm like ah. and he's like i'll get it off for you i'm like don't fucking touch me ah. <laughs> he's like mm -hmm. Come on, come on, you Egyptian queen. Now get it. He coming towards my lip gloss. Ah! <laughs> 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 I never did pedicures again. And at cosmetology school, like, if you don't do it, they'll like send you home. Look, they sent me home for like three days straight. And then they was like, let's just let her set it up because I think Sin's just not gonna do it. You damn right. I'm not doing that shit. I almost died. Imagine if that was not, y'all. It was, hold on. It was like, dude. <laughs> he was like, that's right, you Egyptian queen. <laughs> and he was, oh, let me get it. Oh, it was, the, oh, it was, oh, it was the nastiest shit in the world. And me and my husband was dating at the time. We wasn't even married. And I remember going, I was like, oh my God. They tried to kill me! <laughs> and he just, he thought it was hilarious. He's an asshole. Thought it was freaking hilarious. I found out who my real friends were that day. Damn assholes. So after that, I'm like, y'all kiss my ass. I wish I would do a petty look, any cure, anything. Pedicure these nuts. I'm like, <laughs> pedicure shit, I almost died. And the whole, I'm talking everybody. The counselors were laughing. The guidance counselors was laughing. Our financial aid lady was laughing. The receptionist, the estheticians was out of the room. I'm like, this place, these people are not my friends. Yes, so... That's what cosmetology school was like for me. That was probably my worst horror story. Mm, ooh, no. Yeah, that was the worst one that happened to me. Probably the nastiest thing that I've ever seen. Um, And this is the reason why I was like, nope, I'm just sticking to hair and nails. Nope. And then I picked hair long term. But um, sometimes <clears throat> we went in the esthetician's room. Babe, can you bring my charger? I just said I'm coming here. Babe, can you have one of the kids bring me the charger? Um, so we would sometimes we would go in the SD room, right? And if we had to learn like waxing and stuff like that, because it was just easier. We full Cosmo, we could learn waxing when they wax it. So it was a Brazilian, right? Lord, Lord. And I'm thinking it's about to be some little white lady to come in. It's, I'm not making it a racial thing. It was all white people that was always there. So I'm thinking it's about to be some little white ladies. And they're like, oh my God, yeah, I need like a full wax. Thank you, baby. I thought it was going to be some white lady. Like, oh my God, I need a full wax and everything. But then I walked in there, baby. 
Baby. <laughs> Baby. Um, it was this old ass white guy and he was all fours on all fours. And at that point in my life, I was 19 years old, 18, 19 years old. And I had never seen balls in that situation. Never in life. Sorry if your kids are on here. They shouldn't be on here. Copa already said it. So when I walked in, I walked right back out. I walked in. I said, oh, you got me messed up, messed up. Oh, no. And so everybody started laughing. Apparently, I was funny. I don't see what the fuck was always so funny when I was disturbed and uncomfortable. But I, but I go to walk out and they're like, no, Cynthia, come back in. I'm like, man, this is some bullshit, bro. And so then he looks at me. He's like, oh, you don't want to come in here? You don't feel excited? And I'm like, dog, I swear to fucking God, you better leave me alone because this like... Maybe, maybe like a month after the old white guy toenail was on me. So I'm already like feeling away about white people at this time. It is what it is. Not like that, but I'm sorry. Like some of y'all grandpas be acting and looking creepy as hell sometimes. That's how I was feeling that day. I'm not saying. I, anyway, so I walk in there or whatever and everybody's laughing, of course. And he's giving me bedroom eyes. He's like, oh, do you want to do it? I said, you got me fucked up. No, I do not. So she started laughing. She's like, okay, well, first you have to spread them. I said, you got to spread what? His cheeks. I said, you can spread his own damn cheeks. He was like, okay, you want me to spread them? I said, dog, like, stop, stop talking to me, man. And so she, oh my God, I don't even want to talk about this. <laughs> So she she gave me the gloves or whatever, and I put the gloves on, and he looked behind me and was like, you ready? I was like, dog, stop talking to me, man. And so he started laughing. I'm one of the only black... No, it was me and Tia, right? I think Tia was there. So it's only two black girls in the room. And the other girl that's there, she like really not saying nothing, and they wasn't having her do it. So she gonna say, Sin, you grab... Cynthia, you... They wasn't calling me Sin. Cynthia, you grab one cheek, I'll grab the other one. I'm like, oh my freaking God. Like, oh my God. So I touch like... Like maybe not even... Like not even enough for my fingertip, but like just the balls of my finger. And he was like, oh. I said, nope. Got me fucked up. Absolutely not. Everybody started laughing. Oh, you have to come in here. I said, no, I'm not waxing ass. That's not why I signed up. I'm not putting my hand and no little popsicle stick up. No, little. no. He looked like Willard. Absolutely not. I'm not playing with Willard's butt. <laughs> I'm not playing with Willard's butthole. Absolutely. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. I'm not playing with Willard's ass. I do not think so, buddy. Nope. And he was like, oh, come on. Be a good sport. And I, I got wrote up that day because I told him to sport these nuts. And she told me I went too far. But he had his nuts in my face. So sport these nuts. Sport these nuts. This is the, these all would have been not. This is how you prevent single strand knots. You can't breathe. I couldn't breathe. Imagine having I'm okay. Um, I'm sorry if any of y'all grandpas look like this. I'm sorry. Like he was really, really skinny. Mind you, it's this is the summertime in Vegas. It's 120 degrees outside, so it already smelled like onions and corn chips in there. And his if he's getting waxed, getting his ass waxed. You have to let it get to a certain length. So all you see is gender ass and gender gooch. It was disgusting. I had nightmares for weeks. Y'all don't understand what we go through. So to have to be arguing with y'all about this bullshit is too much. I had to wax ginger ass, okay? To get this license. Y'all want me to be damn arguing. Y'all, everybody needs to give me a thumbs up. I had to wax the ginger ass to get, well, not wax it because I walked out and I got rolled up, but I got rolled up because they tried to have me wax ginger ass and I had to look at ginger gooch. That was so nasty <laughs> and it was old 
And I had never seen a man stuff like that at that time in my life. And then, so I didn't know how they were supposed to look. And I never wanted to see a man stuff looking like that again. And then when I got married, I discovered that, that he, he was just old. And that's why I was looking like that. So, hey, y'all wanted to know the stories. That's the stuff I went through. And then peep that. That was all before lunch. So they wanted us to play with, with Willard's booty meat and then go to Del Taco. That's the shit I went through in school for a year. Ginger Gooch. It was a bunch of, that's what I was doing. Giving white ladies perms and looking at Ginger Gooch and, and getting old fat white guys toenails stuck on my goddamn lip. And then y'all think I want to be sitting here saying, so, ooh, see it uptight. Yes, I'm is. Because I've been doing this for 13 years. And I've been attacked by a fat white guy's toenails. I had another, he was, I'm pretty sure he was a crackhead. Trying to make me play with his booty hole. And then y'all think I'm going to be sitting up here arguing with y'all. <clears throat> I done pay my goddamn dues, okay? Shit. Body about to be arguing with you. Oh, I didn't got can somebody change the subject because I got PTSD. Like, oh, oh, oh. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something, Ashley. <laughs> nurses and doctors, nurses, because doctors be dusty as hell. I don't even want to talk about the way the doctor told me my dad passed away. We ain't going there. But nurses, oh baby, I girl, I'm not gonna tell the story. All I'm gonna say is the, my nurse when I had my daughter, she had the same name as me, and I love her forever because the stuff y'all do, I would be like, hey baby girl, <laughs> I know your border just broke and you're not supposed to get up out of the bed, but you're gonna be on your own. <laughs> you better try to move your ass, baby girl. <laughs> I'm not carrying no boo boo bowl to the bathroom and emptying that shit out and washing it. Listen to me. Like, all I'm gonna say though, if there's any nurses on here, I just gotta get this out because I didn't wanna say it to Cynthia when we was there because my mama told me that you'll never be smart with the people that's taking care of you in the hospital or fixing your food. But I don't wanna tell the story because it's gross. Unless y'all, no, I don't. I mean, well, I mean, it's not gross. And I mean, if y'all wanna hear it then. If you want details, then okay. But I had to use the bathroom in, right next to my hospital bed when I had my daughter right in front of my husband. I thought, I just knew he was going to leave me after that. I was like, this is it. This is the end of our relationship. This is the end of our relationship. But anyway, I asked her, you want to hear the story? Oh, give me a two if you want to hear the story. Oh, no. Why do I act? Why did I bring it up? Oh. <laughs> oh. I'm trying to hurry up and get through this last part before my phone cut off. If my if this live cuts off, then I'm just going downstairs to get my husband's phone. But we should make it over here before my phone dies. Oh. Oh. Okay. So I was my son was due April 26th. But my water broke January 5th, right? So I was able to keep him in until January 15th. My son was born. He was two pounds, six ounces. And now he eats everything in my house. Yeah. But in the meantime, in between time, when my water broke, I was on strict bed rest and I couldn't move. I could go to the bathroom. So the first couple of days, everything was cool because they wouldn't let me eat nothing. But like little episodes, little stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? Nothing to make you have to do number two. You know what I'm saying? So, anywho, um, what had happened was this one day I had asked them if I can get food. They said yes. Yeah. So my husband had went to give me some canes. You know what I'm saying? So it was so delicious. And then I was like, oh, I gotta go to the bathroom. And she was like, oh, okay, I'll be right back. And then I was like, hey, wait, like, why are you gonna be right back if I'm the one who got to go to the bathroom? No, baby girl, is number two, not number one. And she was like, oh my God, it's okay, Cynthia, don't worry. She's like, I'll be right back. I said, wait, 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 though. Cynthia, your name's Cynthia too. I wasn't talking to myself. I was talking to you. Wait a minute. I'm not <laughs> about to shit in this bed though. Like, I'm just not about to do that. And so she started laughing like, it's okay. And I was like, babe, you got to get out. And he's like, babe, if you don't stop. And I was like, I'm not boo-booing in this bed. 
I am a lady. Like, I'm not taking a shit in this bed. I don't care. Let me up. No. Like, leave me the fuck alone. Like, I'm about to get up. And she was like, Cynthia, I'm serious. Okay? And I'm, if y'all have ever had a white lady yell at y'all before, like, it was, it was, like, funny and scary at the same time because I'm like, I am... Like, in in a regular day, I'm like, white lady, I will kick your ass. But on this day, I couldn't get up. And the way she was looking at me was like she was going to tackle me. <clears throat> oh, hold on. The way she was looking at me, she was looking at me like she was going to tackle me. And I'm not going to lie. I've never fought a white girl before. Normally, the white girls in the D, they be cool. So, I'm like, okay, I don't know how this is going to go. And she was like, I'm serious. Like, whenever a white lady does, I... I am serious. I was like, oh shit. Like, okay. So I was like, okay, like, well, can you bring something? She said, I'll do something for you. I'll be right back. And so she brings me a fucking chair with a bowl on the bottom of it. Talking about boo right here. I said, lady, I am not. I was like, Ty, get out. And he's like, babe, I'm not leaving you. Cause my husband thinks he's my father. Um, so he's like, babe, I'm not leaving. I was like, no, you got to get out because you're not going to want to be with me no more after this. And he was like, babe, chill. Like, he was so sweet. <laughs> I love my husband. <laughs> but he was so sweet. And it was so funny because I was like, okay. And I, I started crying. Like, I'm, I'm sitting there like, can you, can you bring me some air freshener? And this is Ashley Clayton. You need to put this on your damn board. Because this shit made me so mad. I was like, can I have some air freshener, please? Her ass brought me, y'all know those little plastic cups y'all get for communion when you at church. She brought me a, one of them little plastic communion cups that the grape juice be in with one damn cotton ball with some peppermint oil on to talk about this go fresh room. I said, Ashley, I don't know what type of shit you be having, girl. I mean, not Ashley. Your name Ashley. I said, Cynthia, I don't know what type of shit you be having, but this little cotton ball ain't going to do nothing about this, okay? This shit ain't going to do nothing about this. And she was like, oh, my God, I'm... <laughs> You are so silly. You haven't even eaten anything. I'm like, okay, okay, Cynthia. And then she um she came back in and she was like, oh, oh. And then left back out. Oh yeah, go give me another kind ball. Give me like six more communion cups. And the worst part, like I was good for a minute, right? She got them out. I was like, oh, I can smell the peppermint oil. It's okay. So it's like, I mean, it ain't nothing to it, but to do it, like the bed, literally the bed is right here and I'm, I'm fucking in a, on the chair. I'm like, lady, what the hell is this? And my husband is sitting right in front of me, baby. It's okay. It's okay. So this is your mind, but I'm like, shit, this is happening now. Like it is what it is. And I looked at him and he was like this. <laughs> he was like, on his phone. I was like, you're going to leave, aren't you? You're going to leave me in the kids. Because this is more than, and he was like, Cynthia, I swear to God, you don't shut your stupid ass up and take a shit. I was like, I just don't want to be a single mom by myself. I want you to be happy. And that was what happened. I'm not telling no more boo-boo stories. So don't, no, I don't feel comfortable. I feel like we know too much about each other now. And I don't feel comfortable. But Ashley, you tell them that they, they need to give more than cotton balls. Are y'all like that, Ashley? Do y'all only give cotton balls? That's some bullshit. I don't know what type of bullshit. Like, what type of mess? Bring me no damn cotton ball, girl. What you think this is? I am black. This is this is Africa. Don't you bring me no cotton ball. Don't bring me a cotton ball. But that was like, was that with my? That was with my daughter. So that was like almost nine years ago, y'all. Yeah. I was man, <laughs> y'all. It was not okay. <laughs> It was, I was like, oh my God. Oh, man. You are 
so wrong for that. No, oh my God, I just, but my nurse, they, she was so sweet. I, I mean, I was good at first, but like after the second week being there, I was like, I wanna go home. <laughs> Leave me the fuck out of here. I'm about to sign the paper so I can get the fuck out of here. Cause y'all not doing shit no way. And she was like, Cynthia, swear to God, y'all think I'm not being funny. Cynthia, I want you to stop it. I want you to fucking stop it right now because you have to fight for your son's life and you are the only one who can fight for him. If you're not fighting, who the fuck else is fighting, Cynthia? And I was looking like, can this white lady cuss at me like this in the place? I'm not kidding. You've made it too damn far. You've made it too far to go here. Now you have the right to leave. That is your right and I can get in so much trouble for even saying this but i am letting you know that if you leave right now you've already made it so far and you're punking out on your son i was like cynthia i'm gonna whoop on your ass now hey <laughs> you're going too far white lady i let i'm telling you what it is okay this is how it is if you want your son to left you're gonna have to push through this push through it you can do it now, I'm going to bring you something to help you sleep, and I need you to get it together. I'm like, I don't know who the hell this white lady talking to, but I'm fucking cat. <laughs> I'm like, can you tell my husband to bring me some, some chicken up here, please? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll tell him right now, but you're not going anywhere. I'm like, oh, I swear to God, if this white lady don't stop yelling at me, I'm going to smack her. So yeah, some chicken. I was starving. And my son was trying to take me out. Y'all think I'm being extra. I am not playing. My husband, when I was having my contractions with my son, I was looking at my, I looked at my husband. I said, tell them I love them. Like, you tell them that I was fighting. You tell them that I was fighting fucking hard, like, and I did everything that I could, but I just couldn't make it no more. Like, he was like, babe, like, y'all know you got to be strong enough because you about to be doing this shit by yourself. I didn't know. I didn't know it was going to be like this. He was just like, oh. <laughs> like, oh my God, like. I was like, you blowing now, but we got to live in the reality of this. <sighs> Tell him I love him. And then it was over. So, you know. That's so, if y'all ask, am I having any more kids? No. <laughs> I think it's beautiful. Live your life like it's golden. If that's what you want to do. If you want to repopulate the earth, by golly, you. <laughs> by golly, you. <laughs> by golly, you. Go ahead. Oh, y'all got a little hang time on them. Got a little hang time on them. All right, let me do this one real quick for my phone. Die. Look, my uterus is closed and shut down for business. When God said be fruitful for a month, probably he was not. Uh, all that stuff. I gave. I, look, I got one. I one each. Bite me. Let me tell you something. If my son would have came out first, I'm telling you something. My daughter would be here. Listen to me, cause my son tried to take me out. It felt like he was like, oh, I'm going to go over here. Oh, no, I think that's the wrong rib. Oh, no, I'm going to go over here. Oh, no, I think that's the wrong rib, too. Hell to the no. She looked like, yeah, I'm not even going to hold you up. That white lady was like, stop being a bitch sin. You can take it. Stop crying. Eat some chicken and shut your ass up. I was like... That's basically what she said. I'm like, I've never been cussed out by a white lady before. And I don't know <laughs> how I feel at this very moment. <laughs> That's why I've always said, like, not all white people are bad. Not all white people are racist. I love, <laughs> even though I almost whooped with the ass that day. Cause she was getting a little, she was getting a little too spunky. Cynthia was getting a little too spunky there. Break. 
this. Lord God. I don't think I got. Well, I got a hairstylist story I could tell y'all. Give me a two if you want me to tell you a hairstylist story. I could give y'all one or two more. Let me know if you want one or two. So if you want another hairstylist story, put two, like whatever the number is. And then. Then we got a little, little ball back there. And I know that look crazy, but I'm putting the, doing this thing with jigger tomorrow. So y'all going to see what this braid pattern is going to be. Okay. So I'm trying to think. Okay. So then you, you have a, a option. Do you want to hear crazy client stories? Like, like rude clients or just, ah, or just like, like low key, like crazy, like, yeah, yeah, like crazy. Just like, not necessarily like mental problems, but like supernatural or just kind of weird. Okay, I'll do one of each. Hold on, y'all. Hold on. Okay. So we're just gonna do. <laughs> so we're just gonna do. We're just gonna do. Um, actually, we're just gonna do one more story, and then on um, Twist Out Tuesday we're gonna have a full fledged story time. But I'm gonna give you these real quick. Let me just. Oh, hold on. But I hope everyone sees how to avoid two strand twists from this video. But okay, so oh, I think which one I want to give y'all. Okay, so I had this one client, and oh god, she came in, and I want to say she was like around my mom's age. So when she walks through the door, she's like, oh, and mind you, she's by herself. And she comes in and she's like, no, no, no. She like looking behind her, no, 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 it's okay. She doesn't mind, it's fine, it's okay. She doesn't mind. And so I'm like, maybe she got a Bluetooth in. So then she sits down and I tell her she can go over to the bowl. So she goes over to the bowl. And when she sits down in a bowl, she's like, okay, so. He was so excited to come and meet you because we both watch your YouTube videos all the time. But he's so nervous. He really wants a hug, but he's scared that you're going to say no. And I was like, well, who? And she was like, okay, his name is Bravery. And he's right there. But, but he may not. He's invisible. So you may not see him right away. I'm like, oh, God, not today. Mind you, at this point, I've had so many people like, I've okay. So I was like, well, no, I don't really want to hug right now. She was like, I don't know, she's, she doesn't want to hug. You can just sit over here. Can he sit in here? I was like, well, I don't really want any extra people. Okay, well, he'll sit in the hall. I said, okay. And so she sits at the shampoo bowl and she's like, I knew that you were the person that I could come to because you believe in aliens, right? And I said, I mean, yeah, I believe that we, it's other people on, and entities on planet. I don't know. Yeah, I don't think we got all these planets. Ain't nothing on there, believes. And she was like, yeah. She was like, that's where bravery's from. You're not going to believe this, but I was in my backyard and I was minding my business and I just heard this big boom. And then I looked in the backyard and it was bravery's spaceship. And I said, I said, okay. And she was like, and so he was really hurt. So he came to the window and I opened the window. I let him in and it was so crazy because all he wants to do is watch your YouTube videos. And for a minute I was interested, but I'm like, there's no way that an alien came from outer space and his spaceship crashed and all he wanted to do is eat Cheetos and watch Silk Presses. Like I just, I just couldn't see it. But then she, you know, starts saying that he transforms into a man sometimes and they marry and they got kids. And then after she told me stuff after that, but I just remember drifting off into, I don't know, like 
into autopilot because I, if you ever hear a stylist that are on autopilot, this is what it sounds like. You talk it and no matter what she say, it's like, what? Uh-uh. Shut up. That's crazy. Damn. Nuh-uh. For real? Really? That's nuts. Wow. It was like that. And so every time I did her hair, you know, he would be with her. And sometimes um, he would tip me. I would watch her pay me through, um, I would watch her, like, click the button to finish the payment. But then she would be like, okay, Bravery just paid you. Did you get that notification? And I would be looking at her like, I just saw your ass click pay now. Like, so, yeah, that was doing hair in Vegas. So, you know, but she was cool. <laughs> So do you guys have any more questions? Because that was our last story. Our next uh, story time will go be on Twisted Tuesday. Actually, I think Twisted Tuesday, that's what we're going to do. I'm going to just be telling y'all stories. And you guys will get to pick the topics. But that was life. I had multiple clients that were, you know, all, yeah. I had a whole bunch of witches as clients. You know, some would, you know, uh, and this Vegas, so the majority of my clients were dancers. And um, it was a very diff weird mix because it was like 50-50. It was like 50% dancer and 50% perfect. No. Like 60-40. Like 60% dancer, lady of the night. That's what I like to call them. Not prostitute, but lady of the night. Okay. Lady of the night. Yes. Um. Okay, yeah, and mm -hmm. so it was. It would be. It would be special because I really had to learn how to control the environment. Because most of the time, the professional women, the first thing they would want to talk about is how disgusting they thought prostitutes were. So I used to have to be like, mm mm, mm mm, mm mm, mm mm, because women think that women who are ladies at night, you know. Do a certain thing, but no, but that'll be a part of our stories. So what I think we should do like, like a snack time. Maybe we can make our twist them Tuesday, like a mukbang type of thing. Did I say that right? Mukbang, mukbang, mukbang. Yeah. Do y'all want that to be a mukbang video? Hot Cheetos. Listen, Sherry Waters, I am not ashamed to say, and I swear to God, I was not no hood rat, but it's nothing like Hot Cheetos and Arizona iced tea, but they don't really have Arizona, I mean, not Arizona, <laughs> Snapple. I don't want to talk about it. Girl, I don't play that. I am very well protected. I've been doing hair for 13 years. So whether somebody was like into spiritual stuff or whatever, people have energies attached to them. So I've always been protecting myself. So nothing ever follows me home. Nothing is brave enough to follow me home. <laughs> I am more than protected. <sighs> They got hot Dorito. No, that's too much for my spirit. I don't think I can handle it. I can eat a big bag of hot Cheetos by myself. Like my husband will come up like, are you serious right now? I'll be like, come get a new tweak coming out. When you bite into a cream for the sweet. You don't like hot Cheetos? Well, I don't know. Don't say that. Don't say that. Just, 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 just get some, get, I don't, just get something else. Hold on, y'all. Sorry, sugars. <laughs> I'm just playing, girl. You don't have to like hot Cheetos. There's a lot of stuff I don't like, boo. Okay, so I know this probably sounds fat if you don't do it, but sometimes I like almost can't even have nachos if it's not with Doritos. Don't judge me. Judge yourself. What's my favorite food? 
<laughs> I'm fat. Um, I don't, <laughs> I don't have a favorite. I eat everything. Uh, it'll be way easier for you to ask me what I don't like. Um, everything. I have a mainly plant-based diet, but it's not because I'm like, poor little chickens. Like, no, I be watching the Discovery Channel. It's this one show my kids like to watch and animals be kicking each other's ass. Like animals be chasing each other's kids, about to eat each other's kids in front of that goddamn mama. So listen, but I like everything. <laughs> Like, okay, I don't eat pig feet, chick feet, like Negro spiritual stuff that my daddy eat because my daddy from Memphis. Don't get mad if you from Memphis and I said that. I'm just saying, like, like hog moles and chitlins and liver. I don't like liver. Yeah, a fat person talking to you guys. That's about it. You know, weird stuff like that. That's, yeah, that's about it. Olives. Don't like olives. Yeah, but neck bones, no. We eat those. <laughs> I, my daddy's from Memphis, baby. I think I had neck bones before I had chicken. My, my daddy and his family are from Memphis. And then we was in the D. <laughs> oh, baby, <laughs> I eat some neck bones. What you talking about? And I've tried chitlins before. My mom knows how to clean them very well. My father used to love them, but I've always thought they smelt and taste exactly like what they are. Ass, pig ass. And that is exactly what it tastes like, what it smells like. And no, I'm not a fan of pig ass. I'm not, actually. It's not my thing. Can you cook one day live? I cook live all the time. I would have, you know, I would actually be cooking live today because I would I normally start cooking around like 3 30, 4 30, 5 ish. Like, but my mama cooking today because I've had a long work day. So I was like, mommy, can you please cook? I'm making you hungry talking about hog moles and chitlins, pig butt. <laughs> Ever since Kev I'll say said butt, I can't say butt without saying butt, pig butt. <laughs> No, look, just think about pig butt before they clean it. And you ain't going to be hungry no more. What are y'all eating for dinner? Actually, let's vote. Give me a one if you want me to talk and cook for Twisted Tuesday. Or if you want me to just be like sitting down telling you stories, talking. Like just sitting down. Which one? So one, if you want me to, if you want to do Twist Them Tuesday while I cook something. And then two, if you just want me to be like sitting, talking and stuff, doing my hair. We, me and my mom are going to do some more reaction video. We're going to vote on that next, Miss T. Wait a minute. Okay, y'all going to cook. Okay, we, okay, two, okay. It looks like two's winning. Okay, looks like two. Okay, it looks like we're doing two. Thank you. I appreciate too because your girl didn't feel like cooking and talking. It's too much. And it be making my eyebrows itch. So I appreciate y'all. What is my mama cooking? I don't know. <laughs> Something with rice probably. My mother is Asian on the inside. By the way, I'm glad we talked about that. I don't like putting fermented rice in your hair. I think rice is delicious if you cook it properly and soak all the arsenic off. Okay, so Twist Them Tuesday, we sit down talking with snacks. So, so far, the only snack that y'all have requested me to be eating is hot Cheetos. I need something else. Ooh, black eyed peas with stewed tomatoes and rice. What's funny, that is not what my mother is making now, but she just made that last night for herself and she made herself cornbread this morning. <laughs> I can't with the other stuff either, but I love olives and neck bones. Ew, ew, ew. Olives look like baby roaches. I hate olives so much. They look like baby roaches with the legs off. And yes, I just, I hope every time y'all look at an olive, you think of a baby roach with his legs popped off. Who, who was that comedian? 
oh, babe, if you in here, can you please say who it is? He was like, we said, well, it wasn't Corey Holcomb. I don't know. <clears throat> but he was like, whenever roaches come to his house, he makes sure he grab them and like pull their legs off and then like let them limp back and be like, don't go over his house no more. That nigga crazy. Look what he did to me. <laughs> That's how olives look like little torture roaches. It's disgusting. Tastes like salty butt. I don't, not that I know what salty butt tastes like. Never mind. Alfredo is so good. It is a super good. Actually, I just made something like that yesterday. And I posted it on my Instagram this morning. I made the post on my Instagram. I posted it. I posted it on my Instagram this morning. I made the post on my Instagram this morning. So follow me on the Instagram. If you want to see the little post, if you Mexican, don't get married. But I don't know why. Like one day I just started putting la in front of everything. I'ma put you want you want me to post on La Monday. You want some chicken with some la rice? <laughs> do you want me to do a silk press and pull off the la cap to let the la hair fall out and la flow? <laughs> Don't get mad. Peanut M Ms and popcorn. Peanut M Ms. Don't like peanut. Okay. Peanut M Ms and popcorn. I like y'all. I can go to the dollar store for all this stuff. They got hot Cheetos at the dollar store too. <laughs> Picture it in your head. How a roach would look. How you see how their head look, how the olive be having the little head popping up like it's a little little random piece on the inside for no reason. And then with no arms, with the legs pulled off. That's how it looked. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. But yeah, what snacks? Come on, y'all. Tell me about the snacks. Look, I'm going to have that stuck in your head. Okay, it was so funny. Why y'all telling me what y'all want to eat? My husband, when I first was saying that, I would be the first time I ever said it to him, I was like, baby, what you want for the dinner? He was like, Cynthia, please don't say that ignorant shit <laughs> no more. I was like, what? You don't like it when I speak the Spanish? He was like, baby, that's not Spanish. I said, it is Spanish. Every word is Spanish when you put la in front of it. Do you want me to, do you like it when I wear la makeup or no la makeup? He was like, baby, please don't say that shit no more. <laughs> so when he tell me to do something, I purposely just do the opposite. So I started saying it so much that one day, he was about to get something. He was like, baby, you want something from the store? I was like, hey, I got you. <laughs> yup. I want some La Cheetos and <laughs> a La Arizona. Okay. Oh, and I want a La Beyond Burger sandwich from the La Carl's Jr. It's going to be like delicious. Delicioso. <laughs> from the La Store. Baby, and then if you're talking about a man, even though this is from French, you make it masculine and you say, hmm, You a man, you want a Lee burger, not a love burger. A love burger is a burger for a girl, a Lee burger is a burger for a man. <laughs> okay, so tell me what the snacks, real quick, before we sign off. I'm, I'm just playing, y'all. If you Mexican and you speak Spanish, I'm not trying to say so. Don't nobody be like, oh my God, I cannot believe that you was making fun of Mexican people. Beat it. Because it's 50 million, a billion. TikTok is full of people making fun of black people. So leave me alone. I can say whatever I want on the little YouTube. Okay, so we have, um, I think the chocolate falls into the scenario with the chocolate and peanut M&M's. So chocolate, peanut M&M's, hot Cheetos. And give me two more snacks. You're Dominican? Okay. So are you on? If you're Dominican, that means you speak the Spanish. Okay. What's wrong, boo? Look, my daughter just was like, Mom, please stop saying that. Okay, so just let me, just listen, I don't have anything to say. There's no race I'd rather be but black. But if I had, if God was like, you got, you got to pick two more. The, my second choice would be Greek, and then my third one would be Dominican. So, 
Just a little jar, no? I think there's a package for you downstairs. Oh, it's here. Oh, I'm going to be down there in a minute. No, I'll go get it. No, no, no. I don't want to open it on here because y'all can't see what it is. It's a surprise. It's a love surprise. I just got the little package I've been waiting for for about two little days. And it is, it's a little sponsorship I've been waiting for for my whole life career. Yes, girl. <clears throat> you don't, I'll show you. I'll open it with you. Popcorn with hot sauce and lemonade. <laughs> you be putting hot sauce on your popcorn? That kind of... What kind of hot sauce? Frank's? I can remember. That looked like Spanish or something, but I don't know. I took, I only took Spanish for one year, but I took French for three and don't remember nothing. I know how to say, this is how you know I'm fat. I know how to say the menu, please. <laughs> I remember how to talk about food. I know how to, now, we go to a restaurant in French, we'll be good. And what's really weird, the one language I remember is German. Like, which is so weird because that's the language I took in like first grade. And then come to find out my husband, my husband's father, go, um, go downstairs with your brother back. You could take that in there. My husband's um, great, yeah, my husband's great grandfather um, actually was born on a plantation. He was the slave master, the owner of the plantation's son. And he was a German man who's like, oh, I'm going to come to America and have slaves. Fucking asshole. Anyway, <laughs> so he, you know, he was conceived like that. The slave master was German. And then, of course, the woman was African, which was my husband's great 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 grandmother and then boom there goes my husband's family so it's just weird that i remember german and german is a very like their nursery rhymes are very scary i'll sing one for you if you want before we go it's really creepy when you learn the words give me a two if you want me to sing it it's really creepy mm. okay <clears throat> This is like a nursery rhyme that they taught us in school. And so I'm guessing this is what they taught their children. And my German teacher was right. Marcus, 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 Marcus. We was like, we're, we're six, lady. Like, we're seven. No, like, no, we was eight. We're eight, lady. Okay. <clears throat> I can't sing. Eins, nein, drei, vier, fünf, sechs, sieben. Where this is my kanka brief. Ich nicht hier, ich nicht there. Ich wo in America. So, this is what it's not, the song means. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Where is my baby? It's not here. It's not there. It must be in America. First of all, lady, I want to know why the hell you need to count to seven to figure out where the hell your baby is, lady. Okay? Why do you need to count to seven to figure out where your baby is? And do you know how long it take your baby to get from Germany to America? How long has your baby been missing? And where the hell have you been, lady? And why are you singing this? Why are you teaching this to a bunch of eight-year-olds, nine-year-olds? And we all in line. Eins, nein, drei, vier, fünf, sechs, sieben. Wo das ist mein Kinkel blieben. Ich nicht hier, ich nicht da. Ich will in Amerika. <laughs> Germans are psycho. But I mean, we're psycho too. Bring around the rosy, a pocket full of posy. Ashes, ashes, we all fall down. That's some sick shit. Or we had thought songs that, in my opinion, was trying to make little girls thoughts when they was little. Little Sally Walker walking down the street. Hey, hey, she didn't know what to do, so she jumped in front of me saying, Gone girl, shake that thing, shake that thing, stop. 
Go on, girl, shake that thing, shake that thing, stop, wait. She wiggled to the bottom, she wiggled to the top. She turned around and turned around and took that yell, stop. That is some thought stuff. Why are little girls singing that? Oh, shake it to the east. Oh, shake it to the west. Oh, shake it to the one that you love the best. I am nine. I should love nobody but my mom and my daddy. And why am I shaking my ass over there? Just saying. And then they wonder why everybody stops. <laughs> yeah, who else was singing along? Let me see what else I got. Um... I think this is a Detroit thing, though. If I'm singing this and you starting to sing along with me, give a two, give me a two, please, please give me a two. If you starting to sing along, and I want you to really sing along until I finish. Okay, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I think this may just be like a Detroit thing or a Midwest thing. I don't know. I could be wrong. I don't know. <clears throat> Y'all hear me singing all the time, but. Ball headed skittle diddle, ain't got no hair in the middle. Ball head humpty dumpty. Ain't got no hair in the front, bald head of scallywag. Ain't got no hair in the back, jibbed and weaving. You know you need it, pressed and curly. Your mama burned it. <laughs> no, nobody, no, no. You got you guys have that one? Yeah, that that I think that was a Detroit thing. We were. Let me see what else. I don't think I'm not gonna sing the rest of them because um. I don't want no anyone judging people from Detroit because um, Detroit 2 just came out. So that was enough. If you guys can't relate to that one, then the other ones aren't going to be. It was the bad. It was that. That was. <laughs> but I, I don't know. I can't think of. And then roll, roll, roll your boat. I don't think. I think that was like a school thing. Oh, Tina, so you did used to sing that. Okay. Because y'all just trying to make it seem like it was just me. Oh, okay. Wait, wait, wait. No, I got I got one. Oh. Okay, so I'm a... I, now that I think about it, we were kind of bad kids. Like, I don't know if this is a Detroit thing, but we remix everything. <laughs> How did you get here? I caught the bus. Nobody's supposed to be here. I came to mess you up. I tried that little thing for the last time. So my heart says, no, no, your heart can't talk. Like, that's the type of stuff we used to do. Like, I believe, wait, I believe I could fly. I got shot by the FBI. All I wanted was some chicken wings and a little bit of collard greens. Yes, no. Y'all remember that one? Yes, no. No. Give me a two if you guys remember that. Huh? I believe I could soar. Yo, baby mama is broke at the door. Oh, oh, like, y'all, yes? You've heard that one? Okay, yeah, there we go. Okay, what else do we got? Yeah, all the rest of them I think are a little bit too much. And I don't, I don't, I don't want you judging Detroit like that because I feel like you would have to be there to understand the context of why children were singing this song. I'm still trying to understand why we were singing this, so I think I'm going to just leave it there. I'm just, I'm gonna just leave it. I'm gonna just leave it there because I just don't want y'all judging where I'm from. You know what I'm saying? Which one was your favorite? Wait, okay. Yeah, I don't. I, I the other ones. I'm. I don't think y'all will understand. And then the rest of them, we were just singing songs that we shouldn't be singing. Like, wait, do you see my? Wait, do you see my? Yeah, that's wait do you say what? Yeah, that was I was I was I was I was getting some hit yeah, that was that was like we really shouldn't have been, been singing that. <laughs> like Oh, and then y'all know y'all know that Cardi B song, that WAP song, that's a Detroit mix. It's supposed in this house. So 
It's, it's just saying it's some hoes in this house. It's some hoes in the house. They just saying that repeatedly, but it's really a Detroit mix. So it really go. It's some hoes in this house. Like that's really how it go. And then big booty. They talk a lot of smack. Been that. So, but and he hit it from the back. Let me do, 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 do. Let me bang. Do, 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 do. It's supposed in this house. Like, that's how it go. And we was dancing to that when we was little. So. But, like, now we know it as the WAP song. Some holes in this, but that's the do, 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 do. Like, look up Detroit mixes. Like, that's. Oh. Me and my family are doing great. You remember that one? <laughs> Am I bringing back childhood? Yes. <laughs> but it was so, it, I don't know. Like it was, that's why when everybody have it, this is the last thing I'm going to say, I think. This is why when everybody be talking about like the WAP song, I'm like, what are y'all talking about? Like the songs we used to listen to were horrible. They were horrible. Like, that is a song I was singing in middle school. Here's another one. Please put your head, turn me down if your kids is in the room. Please. Put, please. <laughs> Stop on my knob like corn on the cob. Like, that's the type of stuff I used to hear. Like, those are the type of mixes that have been around. Like, I, like, what? So, for people to be feeling the way about her song, I just don't get it. Like, we remix that hoe in the house when you see them point them out. Yes. 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 Oh, my God. Delphine, Del, where are you from? That's what it was. I couldn't think. It's a hoes in this house when you see them point them out. And we were bad. We used to be like, it's a hoes over here. There they go. There they go. That's how a lot of fights started in Detroit, not gonna lie. My mom popped me in the mouth for singing that. Popped you in the mouth for singing what? I got in trouble for everything. <laughs> but it was my dad, not my mom. The Detroit mixes were, they were everything though. Like that bad song, oh my God. On Big Shine album. Y'all don't understand too. If you like from Detroit or somewhere around there. And you understand the importance of the Godzilla beat. And like hit rolling in black culture. And I don't want to talk about it. Because y'all just don't understand. Like, And there's no way I can make you understand. So, Okay. Do y'all have any more questions before we sign off? I can't think of no more. I mean, I can think of a lot, but none that I feel comfortable. Because I know there are probably some saints in here or the saints could have left already. I'm sorry. If there are any saints that I made uncomfortable, I apologize, guys. My man was rolling on the ocean. He was rolling on the seas. But the best part about it, he was rolling on me. Oh, what song is that? I don't think I know. Wait, I'm trying to. I can't remember. What song is that, Aaron? I don't. It's like, you know how you can hear the beat in. I mean, you can remember the words, but you can't hear the beat in your head. God darn it. And I hope, I hope that that really is a song. But if it's not a song and that's just something that you're singing, then that's cool too. You know. It's a Chicago thing. I think I love, I listen, Chicago, y'all are my cousins. And I really love y'all. And I appreciate y'all. I do. Yeah, I don't, I think. But it's so, I don't know. That's what I love about people being from other places. Because every Every city has their culture. No, that was a lie. Vegas has 
no culture whatsoever. So that was a lie. But everybody in Vegas pretty much grows up to want to work on the strip or yeah, we're not going to talk about that. Okay, guys, no more questions. I'm going to give everybody like a couple seconds to ask questions and stuff. And while I'm waiting for questions to come in, give me a five if I am going to see you at four o'clock Pacific time on Tuesdays. On Tuesday. Or do y'all like three? Three or four? We not, okay, we gonna save that one from Twist Them Tuesdays. All I'm gonna say is this. You put mayo on your bread. Before you eat a sandwich and you mix eggs and stuff like before you about to make bread, before you about to make a cake. People was putting eggs and mayonnaise and stuff like that in their hair before they had the money to, to make stuff. Okay? Eggs are protein. Okay? Mayonnaise, that's protein. You want to put that stuff on your hair, just get a protein treatment. Y'all are pulling back stuff that our ancestors used. Our grandparents was putting eggs and mandates on their hair because they didn't have protein treatments and conditioners. Stop putting eggs and stuff in your hair. I used to have women put eggs in their hair. They thought they risked it all out. I pulled a blow dryer out and it's damn IHOP in the room. I'm trying to do a silk press it in and turn into IHOP. My room smelling like bacon and sausages because y'all didn't put mayonnaise and eggs in y'all hair i know you joking but it's probably somebody in here that's not playing and if you're not playing stop putting damn mayonnaise and eggs and cheese and stuff and biscuits in your hair you are not a dinner plate you are a woman okay you are a melanin drenched woman or maybe you don't have no melanin who knows i don't care i like all flavors of the rainbow hello baby you are could use okay even if you, you know, a little yellow, a little caramel, you melanin dress. Maybe you don't have no melanin. You know what I'm saying? Maybe you like Russian or something, whatever it is. You are not a damn burger. You are not a breakfast burger. Stop putting mayo and eggs and sausages in your hair. I am so sick of it. Or bacon. No. If it goes on a burger, don't put it in your hair. Stop putting condiments in your hair. Our ancestors was doing that because they didn't have nothing. But if Harriet Tubman was here right now, if Madam C.J. Walker was here right now, she the one who created the pressing comb, and they did that with the stuff that they had. If Madam C.J. Walker was here right now, and she knew that with all of the technology that y'all had, y'all was still making yourself into a damn croissant sandwich, she'll be kicking all of y'all ass. So y'all need to stop. You are not a burger. You are not a breakfast sandwich. You are not McDonald's. You are not Burger King. Stop putting damn burger mixes in your hair. That's so gross. My daughter just said it was disgusting. Mayonnaise, eggs, is protein. Research. Why, why? Everybody go Google. Why is eggs and mayonnaise good for your hair? And they're going to say because they're high in protein and natural oils. Go get some almond oil and a protein treatment. You are not a burger. I'm sick of it. Or you're not a plant. Like Red said, everybody like, oh, I only wash my hair every six months because dirt make your hair grow. Dirt only makes plants grow. It clogs your cuticles. You are not a plant. You're not a burger. And you are not a damn breakfast sandwich. And I don't care who got a problem with what I got to say. I'm sick of it. I'm sick of everybody asking me 50 million questions about, oh, can I put condiments? Can I put ketchup and mustard in my hair? What do I do when I put honey and mayo together? No, you are not chips and dip. Disgusting. It's gross. Oh, now because Cardi B put freaking mayo and, and avocados in her hair. Not everybody want to put damn avocados in their hair. Since when in the hell has Cardi B been a hairstylist? No, Cardi B sings about WAP. That's it. Okay. We let Cardi B let us make, let Cardi B make us confident about our stuff. But stop, you are not a damn taco. You're not a taco. And you, no, you're not damn taco. No, this is, your, this is not Taco Bell. Stop putting damn guacamole in your hair. It's annoying. I'm sick of it. The hell? And I'm not the only one. You go into a dermatologist, they're going to say use avocado oil. Stop. You are not a burrito. I'm going to start calling y'all Taco Bell. Mommy. Taco Bell and McDonald's and IHOP and Denny's. 
an egg works. That's what this is. I'm sick of it now. And y'all say whatever y'all want. I don't care. Y'all make a reaction video or do whatever y'all want to do. But you are not tacos. You are, you should be black and proud. Your ancestors fought hard for you to read. And for you to use the Google. And the Google will tell you that it's all protein. Just use the damn protein tree. Yeah, damn omelets and stuff. I'm sick of it. Don't talk about Cardi. Listen, Cardi is, listen, now, I just said Cardi ain't, she don't know nothing about hair. I'm not saying that the rude about Cardi. I Look, I think Cardi is doing a lot of stuff for women. We not going to go there. We not going to talk about that. Women can say whatever they want to say. Y'all don't know whether or not Cardi B didn't read no book. Because even if she ain't read no book, she read some type of book. And she got a mil she a millionaire. So whatever book she didn't read, I, I unread it. Whatever book I read that she ain't read, I don't want to read it no more. I delete it from my head. Okay, so you not a little egg. This in closing, you not a little egg. You not a little burrito. You are not a little taco. You are not a bagel sandwich, okay? No, absolutely not. We're not going to do it. This is not okay. Our ancestors fought too long and hard for y'all to still be walking around here smelling like sandwiches. It's ridiculous. And if y'all don't smell like sandwiches, y'all smell like pickles. <laughs> All this damn apple cider vinegar. <laughs> y'all walking around looking like burritos, breakfast sandwiches, and pickles. It's ridiculous. I'm sick of it. I am sick of it. Okay? And not the bacon either. No, I'm sick of it. How often do we do protein treatments? If you have low porosity, I mean, if you have low porosity hair, you never do protein treatments. Ever. <laughs> If you have high porosity hair, no more than once a month. If you have medium porosity hair, maybe every three months. There is definitely a such thing as too much protein. Okay? But we're not bagels. We're not sandwiches. We're not pizzas. Okay? We're not burritos. We're not nacho bell grandes. Okay? No. I love you guys. Any more questions? Any more questions? We're not tacos. Give me a four right now if we understand that we are not tacos, burritos, or nachos. Come on. Or breakfast sandwiches. Hello. Who put breakfast sandwiches in their hair? Baby, they put breakfast sandwiches in their hair. Eggs and mayo. You need eggs and mayo for your breakfast sandwich. Or for your all-day brunch burger. You are not an all-day brunch burger. All-day brunch burgers have mayo, <laughs> eggs, and guacamole on them. And they have onions on them, too. Y'all using onion juice, too. Fresh onion juice. Well, onion juice is okay. It just stank. But they be putting uh, vinegar on the burgers. You're not. No. You are not on the menu. You are not on the menu, Melody. I'm glad you needed to hear it. I will be the one. I will be the one to say it. I will be the one to say it. We are not on menus. Can low person here become <clears throat> only if you strip the cuticle? So, um, if ah, if you use if you use like any type of color or anything like that, this strips the cuticle. It can't open it up and it won't close back properly if you do it wrong. Exactly, your grandma used to put eggs in your hair, and your grandma when she remember our grandparents couldn't use the same water fountains that white people could. It was a colored water fountain and white people's water fountain. So they did not have access to the best of the best. They were putting lard and Crisco on their hair because that and, and petroleum jelly and blue magic because that was the only thing that they had access to. They couldn't even use the same bathroom. So why do we always bring that up? Oh, my grandma did it. Like they didn't have everything. And if they had access to the stuff that we have now, I can guarantee you they wouldn't have been using pickle juice. The hell? Sorry, it's getting on my nerves. My mama told me that if I touch her ears for my hair, she would drop. <laughs> I'm laughing.
because I could picture a mom. I could picture your mama. She probably said it to you when you was going in there for, or she probably heard you listening to it or watching it. Like, I know you better not push. I know you better not take your ass in there and touch my eggs. But drop kick your ass. Leave my eggs alone. That's what happened. <laughs> A la plant, yes, a la plant. Fish are friends, not food. Eggs are food. Wait, what? Fish are friends, not food. Eggs are food, not protein treatments. <laughs> ah, I love y'all. Y'all worse than me. That's why y'all in here and that's why y'all like me because y'all crazy like me. What do you think? of castro jelly in place of grease. Either way, it blocks the follicle. Castro oil is too thick. If you look at castro oil in the follicle, it looks like a little puddle. It's a retention oil. It can go on the hair shaft, like the Shea Babe um, butter that I use. One of the oils that I use is Jamaican black castor oil, but it is for my ends. It is for retention to hold onto my ends because it creates a layer on top that locks the moisture in. So I do layers of it away from the follicle it is a retention oil so it will clog the follicle and if you want to prove it to yourself hey peep this you can test it out before you put an oil on your scalp put it somewhere on your face and i bet you if your face break out you can see it's a little bit too thick for them stop it you're welcome babe mm -hmm. Okay, I'm a, it is, it just turned 523. So when it says 524, if I have no more questions, we're going to go ahead and end. So if y'all have questions, then go ahead and ask your girl. Do you have a video on how to do the Shea Bay? It's coming soon. Make sure your post notifications are on. Give me a thumbs up really quick if you have not done so already and you got some type of value out of this video. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a thumbs up. Hello. Just click it. Like it's right there. Click it. Hello. Boom, boom, boom. Do you have a video on Question, I'm thinking of ordering Olaplex shampoo and conditioner for my daughter's hair. <laughs> Do I think Olaplex is a good product? Do I think Olaplex is a good product? Well, I will tell you something, sister. You just give it a minute. Give me about three days. Uh, 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 no, I, I just lied. It's not going to take me three days because I'm so freaking excited. So maybe give me, uh, what is today? Oh my God. Oh, Fooey. What's today? Thursday, sugar? Yeah. Okay, so give me to Tuesday, all jokes aside, give me to Tuesday, and by Tuesday, I got <laughs> Olaplex. <laughs> Do I think Olaplex is good? Give me to Tuesday. Give me until Tuesday, and I'm going to give you a full video, video, video about it. How to get the crown of my hair to grow back, high porosity, no ponytails or updos. So when did your hair start thinning out? Because I need to know the, before I can give you a solution, I need to know the cause. Because there's a lot of different reasons that your hair could be falling out. There are hundreds of types of alopecia. So there's no way that I can know what the problem is. I'm not saying that you have alopecia, but I need more information than that. Is it okay? And then, by the way, if you guys are on here and you feel like you really, really just want to have like a one-on-one -on -one hair consult with me where I can see your hair, like obviously I can't touch it, but I do video consultations all the time where you can book like a 20-minute session with me and we're like this, but it's just me and you on a video chat on Zoom and then you just have your hair look at however you want it to look and you can't feel away because we started with me looking dusty on here. And then you book the appointment. And once you book the appointment, thank you, babe. You book the appointment. And then once you book it, you just ask me all about your hair. And then I'm asking you questions like, what is your, what are your patterns? What are your routine? And we can actually have a consultation because you guys, I, I can't, if you say like, oh, I have low porosity hair. My hair is thin and I wear my hair in a ponytail every day. That is not enough information for me to give you a... Uh, directions on what to do like i said there are hundreds 
hundreds of forms of alopecia. There are hundreds of butters and oils. There are a bunch of different reasons why your hair could be thinning out. And I need to be able to ask you questions and find out things about your patterns, what you eat and all types of things like that. So if you want to book a consult with me, then like I said, once this video ends, give it like five minutes and then I'll have all of the links in the description box below. But you can always just head straight over to my website and then go to book send now. And then there will be a couple of different options and you're going to go hair online live Zoom hair consult. And then boom, there you go. Shablam, shaboom. Then we can talk on there. But y'all, I can't. It's, it's not that simple. Just like I always like to give this analogy that's just like if your car, if you drive in your car and it start making this weird sound, you have to take your car into the mechanic and you have to let them put it up on a machine and let them look at it so they can access it. You can't just call the mechanic and be like, oh, I was driving. I went over this hump and it was like, hum, hum, hur, hum, hum, hur. what do that mean? Is that my brakes? And then when I turned the corner, when I hit my brakes, it was like, hur, boop. and then he going to be like, girl, I don't know. I need you to come in so I can put it on the machine. He's not going to be like, oh, well, that may be your carburetor. And that's your brake engine on the left hand side. No, I need to look at it. So, yeah. <clears throat> what about what about aloe vera? What about aloe vera? What um, what about? I don't know. What about aloe vera? I don't know. What about aloe vera? You tell me. What do you mean? What about aloe vera for what? Yeah, I watched your Olaplex review, and now I'm dying to try it. Do you have a referral affiliate link? <laughs> You just wait, you guys. Everybody that's asking about Olaplex, you wait. You just wait. I'm telling you guys, it's going to be here next week. So make sure that your post notifications are on. And make sure that you're coming back and checking my page every day. Because there's always going to be something new on the way. Okay? Like, all just aside, seriously. It's coming, like, ASAP. Like, ASAP. And I've already given too much information. Like... I'm not even supposed to tell y'all that I'm making an Olaplex video. I'm supposed to just pop out like, hello. So, I miss the almond oil chat. Is that good? Uh, almond oil is good, but for, okay, I promise you guys. There is an Olaplex video coming very soon. And there is a video coming all about oils and essential oils coming now. I already made my list out on the top. 50 I'm going to put on my blog, but in the video, I'm going to give you my top 15, but there are hundreds, hundreds. So I need to do a video. Oh, you just subscribe, subscribe, Melanie. I didn't know you wasn't subscribed. You've been all in here. Listen, thank you. I'm so glad I was able to win you over. I promise that I'll be really sweet. I promise. I'm, look, I'm a great mother. Like those are my children over there. They're waiting. They think they're my parents. Say hi, please. Can you say hi? Deuce? He too cool now. So, like, he don't let me come in the bathroom or nothing. Like, I can't see him when his clothes is off no more. So, I'm sorry. What about detox shampoo that you showed us before? Um, It's the camera. But, like, I'm a, I'll am do a whole nother video on... Okay, so I guess I have to do another video for my favorite products. I'll do that again, too. That's okay what I need. That's, okay, that's what I need. Dry detangling. Yes, dry detangling. <laughs> what about aloe vera to put on your hair? Um, You can put aloe vera on your hair, but aloe vera has a specific um botanical makeup. And it should only be used for certain reasons. It shouldn't be used all the time. So... I'll have a video coming up for aloe vera, but I just want to say until then, you guys do your research. Like you can literally type in, is aloe vera good? After you figure out what your high, what your porosity is and if whether or not you have thin, medium, or thick hair, type in, is aloe vera good for low porosity hair? And it will give you a detailed description. Stop listening to these girls that ain't been to nowhere but YouTube University, okay? You can use Google. Google has most of the information that people spent hundreds and thousands of dollars learning in school. You can find stuff like that out very easily, okay? Stop listening to these people. Stop listening to the YouTube University graduates unless they have some valid information. If if y'all find 
If you find a YouTuber to say use rice water only if you have high porosity hair, listen, she, hey, hey, but nobody doing that. Everybody like rice water work for everybody here, but you know porosity or high porosity or medium porosity, you gonna have real long hair, use this rice water, and that's not true. Can you train high porosity hair to stay more straight for longer than two days? If your hair is if your hair is not staying straight for longer than two days, it is for one of two reasons. Either the hair was not put into beta keratin properly, or you are sweating in your hair, or it's some type of moisture is getting on your hair and is making the hydrogen bond revert back and making your hair curl back up. There is nothing you can do to prevent your hair from curling back up once it gets wet. Nothing. You can get a relaxer. But that's it. Hydrogen bonds love other hydrogen bonds. And water is H2O. So when the hydrogen bonds in your hair meet the hydrogen bonds in water, they be like, oh, give me a hug. Oh, yes. And then it's broken down and it's really pliable and I guess easy to do. But listen, there's no way to keep the hydrogen bonds from breaking. Like there's no way. It's that It just doesn't work like that. Can you train your high porosity hair? Oh, I already answered that question. Actually, almost two hours. We can make it to the two hour mark. <clears throat> Is it okay to moisturize the scalp with stray butter? No, God. <laughs> no. <laughs> No, shea butter is too thick for the scalp. Right now, when we get off of here, go on Google and type in, can shea, should shea butter go on the scalp? Will shea butter clog my follicle? Shea butter is too thick for the scalp. Shea butter is meant for retention. It is meant for retention. When you look at the hair follicle under an electronic microscope with shea butter, coconut oil, castor oil in it, it looks like a puddle inside of a hole. It is too thick. Shea butter, no, it doesn't matter what oils you put in it, it's still too thick. If you put if you put tea tree oil in in shea butter, it is thick shea butter with the properties of tea tree oil. That's how it go. Um, blah, blah, blah. I really love the one that I showed you guys earlier from Kimra. Anything that, like most, most clarifying shampoos are bomb. Uh, Kimra has a really good one. They have two. One smells like grapefruit. And then this one over here, it has um, activated black chocolate in it from Kimra. That one's really good. But most clarifying shampoos are really good. You just need to pick up a clarifying shampoo. Look for a clarifying shampoo. And when you are using a clarifying shampoo, make sure you are trying, you are concentrating it on the scalp. The shampoo is already going to rub down the ends. And once you rub down the ends, you're just stroking it a little bit. Um, if it doesn't stay straight, it's because you're not straightening it properly. There, you have, this is the last thing I'm going to say, I promise when it comes to straightening your hair, everybody's so like, oh my God, I'm so scared of flat irons. No, you have two types of setting. You have wet setting and you have dry setting, okay? Dry, because the, the purpose is to get your hair from alpha keratin. Alpha keratin is the state that your hair is in when it's in its natural state. That is alpha keratin. Beta keratin is the new form that you've given the hair when you've reorganized the, the hydrogen bonds by setting, resetting the hydrogen bonds. That is where hairstylists get the term wet set from or roller set. You're using the rollers to set the hydrogen bond. People don't know that. They just think it's called roller set just because it's cute. No, cosmetology school, we learn about the hydrogen bond and you set, you wet set the hydrogen bond with rollers. So you stretch it out and then you put foam wrap on it, put them under the dryer and the hair dries completely. A lot of people think that hair stylists are just trying to keep them under the dryer for 17 years but if I take you from under the dryer before your hair is fully inside of beta keratin you're either going to have heat damage or it's not going to revert back most people 
are not have most people's curls revert right back as soon as they go outside because hairstylists do not understand how important it is to make sure they get every single strand of hair into beta keratin before they let you leave. But most people are right there in between alpha keratin and beta keratin. Like your hair not really, really dry. It feels dry to the touch, but the follicle is still wet and the inner cortex of the hair is still a little wet. That's where heat damage happens. And that's why when you go outside and water touches it, it reverts right back like that because it's not in beta keratin. So as soon as the hydrogen bond that has not been set all the way, because it's, it's still in limbo, <laughs> Once hydro, another hydrogen bond hits it with the water that's in the air, especially if you're in a humid climate, it reverts back automatically. That's why a lot of people think like, oh, it's not that complicated to do a, a silk press. It, yeah, it is. And there is people think, oh, it's no difference between a flat iron and a silk press. There is a difference between a flat iron and a silk press, at least for me. Somebody books a flat iron with me. They just, they coming in, a uh, deep conditioner treatment isn't included unless they purchase one. I mean, unless they pay for it. And then I blow dry their hair and then I just run the flat iron through it. The trim isn't included or anything. And then they go out. Okay. I'm still making sure I do my job and making sure that the pair is in beta keratin before I do anything else. But, <laughs> but they're not getting a silk wrap now the silk wrap ensures that your hair lasts even longer because after i get your hair straightened well after i blow dry your hair i sit my clients under the dryer for at least 15 minutes because normally that is the that is around the time that gets my client's hair all the way in beta keratin where i need it to be so they won't get heat damage and their hair will not revert back well unless they sweat in their hair um in their scalp Okay, and then after that, then I straighten their hair and while it's still warm because your hair is still warm. And what do I teach you guys? Or this is science. It's not what I'm teaching you. But hot water or hot air opens the cuticle and cold air closes the cuticle. So to make sure that the hair stays in beta keratin until I introduce water again, you take <laughs> you end up taking a a serum and the reason that i'm using the serum is because i want the serum to coat the hair shaft from like not really the root because i'm not putting it on the root but from like all the way down the hair shaft to the ends i wanted to coat the hair and remember the hair is still hot which means the cuticle is still open <laughs> The cuticle is still a little open because I just put a hot flat iron on your hair. So I want to make sure that I get you completely in beta keratin and I want to make sure that I have your cuticle completely smooth and closed. So like I said, I put the oil on depending on your level of density because there, there are two different oils that I use depending on the density of my client's hair. If their hair is high porosity, then I'm using a oil-based heat protectant. But if their hair is low porosity, I am using a alcohol-based heat protecting hello and then i put the serum on their hair wrap it in a circle put the plastic cap on because it insulates everything it insulates the oils and then when they're under the dryer the air is cold not hot the air is cold because cold air closes the cuticle. So I've already put the serum on there that's going inside of the already open cuticle, wrapping the hair, placing my client under a cold dryer to close the cuticle and seal in the new style that I have set her hair in, in beta keratin, and to set in the product that I just put in. That is the difference between a silk wrap and a silk press. There is a very big difference. And... A proper silk press is all about the person who is doing your hair, knowing how to professionally get your hair from alpha keratin to beta keratin. And a lot of people don't even know that most of the people that are styling their hair don't even know what alpha keratin, oop, don't even know what alpha keratin or beta keratin is. And if they do, they forgot. Because most of these people that are online 
are either not licensed at all or they're licensed hairstylists. And there is a difference between a licensed hairstylist and a licensed cosmetologist. A licensed hairstylist is exactly what it sounds like. They are licensed to style your hair and they pass everything as it pertains to state board, sanitation, all of that. But when it comes to chemicals, your scalp, the layers of skin, all of that, no. A cosmetologist is licensed to take care of everything from the top of your head to the bottom of your feet. As a licensed cosmetologist, I can give you facials, I can do skin extractions, I can do your eyebrows, I can do your nails, I can do your toes, I can wax your kuda mama and stuff. I can do your hair, I can do your nails. It, the sky is the limit from the top of the head to the bottom of the toes. A hairstylist can only touch your hair and they cannot do chemical services. There is a difference. Love you guys. Okay, guys, um, I don't see any more questions. I love you so much. Um, give me a two right now if you are going to be in the live on Twist Them Tuesdays. Give me a two if you're going to be there on Twist Them Tuesday. <laughs> Hello, people. Where are your twos? I am looking for your twos. Where are they? Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. And make sure, like, I just feel like I shouldn't be the only one that got to get the snacks. So I'm for sure going to get them. But on Twist Them Tuesday, we are going to be here at 4 p.m. Central. So that's going to be 7 o'clock your time if you um in the Midwest or on the East Coast or something. You know, and everybody needs to have hot Cheetos, M&M's, or some type of chocolate. And I forgot what the other thing was. Actually, just get a third thing. You just surprise me with your third thing. Okay? And I'm going to surprise you with my third thing. But hot Cheetos. And if you don't like hot Cheetos, for whatever reason, get another spicy chip or some popcorn. And some m and or some chocolate. Even if it got to be white chocolate. I love white chocolate. Or vegan pizza. Girl, if you want some vegan pizza, do you? But I'm a... By the time we get on, oh, actually, I'm probably going to eat dinner on with y'all because that ain't dinner time for me. But I love you guys so, 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 so much. Please do me the biggest favor. I've never asked you guys to do this before. But once this video ends, it takes a minute for it to load up. So if you can do me a favor and when this video pops up, if you can just go in the comments and leave a heart or emoji or something, it helps so much much to push it up in the algorithm please please like say something nice or just go in there in the comments not right now but when the video ends and the video goes live on my channel just go on there and just you know give me a heart emoji and then tell me what snacks you gonna have okay i love you guys so so much